everyone welcome back to the Lomare games my homebrew and uh, we are missing Connor uh, Ted Rose he is getting vaccinated so awesome reason awesome reason yeah, not to make it <laughs> I'm still waiting on that second shot so uh, yeah yeah. Another two weeks away from yeah but hey I'm on the path there, there's actual light at the end of the tunnel so very happy but we are here for the Lomer games and last we left off the heroes of uh of father's resolve and the winners of the group melee of the Lomer games decided to see the new property owned by saga and when they arrived they realized it was much much needed of some tlc in every conceivable way roofs collapsing in and massive uh rat problems and a panther that comes every so often to feed on the rats and mold and all types of any problem that can happen to a keep was happening the party had a uncomfortable night of rest woke up to the sound of uh, workers coming in and the and the man who's running that uh the repairs is a guy named uh, John Periwinkle. He's uh, he's uh, he's gave a pretty hefty estimate, and uh, the saga decided to go into a partnership with uh, with her uh, blood hunter pal Jago. A couple thousands and thousands of gold down, and. John Periwinkle's best guys, Mo and Larry and Curly, on the job. So we'll see how their work comes around when they come back. Meanwhile, uh, the guide, Caleth, goblin artificer, who has her own personal fairy that her family developed that's going to take them through the bayou so they can track down Frollo and the concoction that is that Awakorte has made hundreds of years ago to help with his ascension which apparently has killed many people apparently that concoction is being created once again under the uh, through Frollo's means and the party had three choices of potential places in the bayou to visit a place called Tucked Away Rum Log and the name of the other one <laughs> which is right here because I totally didn't make it up on the spot. Thornbog. <laughs> the, yeah, usually places that arrive, uh, you know, on the spot. Pretty much. Pretty much. Well, I realized as you were saying this, like, didn't have my notebook and started panicking. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the party decided to go to the mysterious tucked away. As it seemed like a spot that no one has ever visited. And it seemed like the ideal location to create a type of concoction for a death god when well, upon arriving they come across a quiet small town with only four occupants who are incredibly friendly the the elder Gregor a jolly large old elder orc man the even oh the eldest orc woman Marie who always has a kind smile to give, and the two tieflings, uh, Era Lynn and Holmes, may have offered them a bath and food pertaining of mostly orange slices and oranges and onions. Not much for a small town. They are incredibly friendly, and Jago is suspicious. And that's, and that's where we l left off. You guys are in the middle of Tucked Away. The, it's getting kind of late, and um, you see Gregor putting up a platter of food. Seems like he has assembled. Eric, yes. Sorry to interrupt, but we've got a comment from Ted. Uh, you're not capturing the desktop audio properly, and so we can only do the thing on the heroes through your mic. Through my mic. So this is a that's an interesting problem that I have no idea how to solve, sir. Great, great. So you guys can only hear the audio, only hear the party through his mic. So 
thank you. That is, um, I have. I guess we'll talk loud. <laughs> That's gonna, this guys, I ain't gonna lie. This is what happens when the tech guy isn't here and I am a streamer in training. So, I'm here. Add a audio source that captures the desktop. Okay. Sure. Th those are words. Those are, those are uh, actions that someone can do. <laughs> to text me that team, ah, the team viewer code. Yes. We are going to pardon the delay, ladies and gentlemen. I, I really do apologize, but some technical difficulties, I imagine, are kind of common. It was quicker, just it's quicker this way. to all of this all righty and Ellen's gone <laughs> well while you guys are waiting I would just like to take this moment to thank our sponsors <laughs> so uh, start playing dot games if you guys are interested in uh, finding a, a DM a D and D a DM you want to hire to run a D&D session or any type of tabletop game, um, you can go and find that on startplaying.games. And if you guys like some of the um, maps that I've used in previous uh, sessions or uh, what I'll be using today, uh, the maps I'm currently using are from um, Afternoon Maps. Go ahead and find uh, them on Patreon. And easy enough to find great maps for wherever your journey may take you and as always my name is eric bell you guys can find me on bell comedy uh that's my social media for everything the tiktok and facebook instagram i also have a podcast called tell me a story podcast and you guys can find all of that in the link in my bio on any of those social medias and did i give bear enough time Who knows? Okay. In the meantime. Do we need to vamp for more time? No. <laughs> we, well, actually, let's, let's vamp for more time. Ellen, how can people find you? You are muted. Tips, uh, focusing on inclusivity in D&D. So, yeah, please come say hi. Bringing it over to Sean. Hey, um, I'm Sean. I go by Kenobi Homie on Twitch. Um, streams, lots of video games and stuff. <laughs> and I play movies. <laughs> knows how to run the light rich yeah hey so uh it's me guys uh so i have a podcast called development hell we talk about movies and such uh just sort of a long history for example i can talk about how uh so Heim Saban originally owned Power Rangers, and so they owned Power Rangers up until about the mid-2000s, when then it was bought out by Disney, which then they moved the production all the way to New Zealand, which then started quite a few years of a shared interconnected universe of Power Rangers uh, that didn't really connect with the Saban, except for on special anniversary episodes. And then, in 2009, Nickelodeon bought Power Rangers and gave it back to Saban, and we have the Power Rangers we have now. Thank you. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I, I ran as much time as I can possibly run, <laughs> and we're going to go from there, hopefully. That doesn't even talk about the Power Rangers movies universe. <laughs> you, have Mar you have Morphin, a Power Rangers movie. You have Turbo. You also have the three the home movies. <laughs> hmm. Can we get into the ooze, Rich? 
The ooze, yeah, that is more than a Mighty uh, Morphin Power Rangers movie. Actually, Mariska Hargitay, who plays Olivia Benson uh, on Law and Order, was the original woman that was supposed to give them all their ninja powers, and then she got replaced last minute. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Well. Nice. Learned so much today, and now we're good to go. So and okay. we're good to go. That's right. how you Ooh. run the light, ladies That's and gentlemen. <laughs> For more Power Rangers talk, join me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's guys, wow. and there you have it. And now we take it back up to Tucked Away. As the night's going, Gregor is putting up a plate of food. There seems to be um, a little bit of bread, a little on the modier side of things but uh, some oranges and some uh, roasted onions. And he is putting some plates down in a little table that he's placed in the, ne right next to the little uh, makeshift pond in the middle of the village. And he's like, well now, why don't you all come on down and have a, have a seat. Let us treat all guests the way old fashioned Lemurians should treat them with hospitality. Oh, thank you so much. My pleasure. And you see um, Marie kind of shamble over, like she's kind of walking with a limp. Seems like she's, you know, like later on in the years. And um, Era Lynn kind of, you know, helps her along. And she's, oh, thank you, baby. Thank you. No, 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 no problem, Marie. And, and they all put seats down. They have chairs set up for all of you. Do you sit? Alrighty. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know if I trust. I don't. I don't trust anything. I don't trust anything here. I'll man. sit with these people, but I'm gonna fake it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I sit. Let me I sit very cautiously. All right. You shit cautiously. Very I want to see if Connor. <laughs> Connor would be <laughs> curious like... enough to make an inside <laughs> check. So, wow. Sorry, Connor. <laughs> You got me rolling for you, so it's not going well. That's an eight on insight. So Connor's like, well, it's not much of a, not much of a dinner, but yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll sit down and and he starts eating the oranges. Uh, what do you, uh, you guys start eating? Uh, I'm gonna fake eat. Okay. Even I've got to do slide of hand check. Yeah, so yeah. Give me a slide of hand check for that. What about you? Uh, you look I also fake you. Give me a slide of hand check. This is gonna be hilarious. This is this. Yeah. Actually, a 19. Nice. Oh. I got a 17. So okay, you, they don't notice. They have a, they don't have that high of, uh, passive perception. So and they don't. The, the drink almost hits my lips. <laughs> so as you, uh, <laughs> yes, because of course they also have the wine that, um, that they were serving to. Saga earlier. Um, Saga, do you drink the wine? Yeah, I do. Okay, give me Sucks. a give me a constitution <laughs> check. Mm, orange wine. Um, eighteen, I want to say. But I'm, as I said, very functional today. So let me actually pull up my character sheet and double check if that's my modifier. It's either seventeen or eighteen. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so 17 or 18, great. Uh, so, drink tastes good, hits you fine, doesn't do anything for your buzz, but give me a medicine check. Ooh, I rolled well on that. Um, 18. 18. Something seems off about the wine. Like, as you're drinking it, you feel a little lethargic. Like, surprisingly more tired than you feel like you should. I mean, it's late, but now you're feeling, you feel like you're a little sluggish now. It's something that you notice after drinking the wine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop drinking it, and I'm just gonna take a look around the table and try to get a read on everybody from the town and see if I can tell if they're reacting to me drinking it in any way. Go ahead and give me an insight check. Yeah, can I, like, eye them as they're, like... Absolutely, you guys can give me an insight check. 17. 17. Oh no, they found me. 12. 12. Uh, what's that, 7? Seven. 7. Uh, you guys, again, they have this 
very happy smiles and calm disposition like they're just enjoying uh, a, nice, a lovely uh, meal with guests uh, Saga you uh, noticed that they were looking at you when you started drinking the wine oh Saga's finally suspicious yes that that's <laughs> reasonable for you now to be suspicious what and as they're like eat- the professor eating that pea in uh, Powerpuff Girls <laughs> As you guys <laughs> enjoy your meal, uh, Gregor, now you were telling me that you were looking for uh, some of Frollo work. No, we were looking for the candy Rolos. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, it's the, the chocolate with the caramel on the inside. It's very, oh my God, they're very delicious. Melts in your hand, your pocket, and the wrapper. <laughs> Everywhere. You just you gotta hurry up and eat them. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Both of you give me a deception check. Oh my god, come on. I tested you. Six. Fourteen. Fourteen. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So Lartan they they can see you phoning it in, just kinda riffing off of uh off of Jago. Uh, what, what was your role, Jago? Uh, 14. 14? Mm, well, wherever you're going, we're happy to give you some directions, and you're more than welcome to stay tonight. You know, the, the bayou can be hazardous in the evening. You should stay. You should, uh, we have a lovely home that we can, uh, set you up in. Oh, you know, you are all so sweet. But I spent most of my life at sea, and so I feel really comfortable out on the bayou. No need to worry about it. We could not possibly impose on you any more than we already have. Oh, uh, I'm from a I'm from a very small tribal village, and we sleep on um, what we call soft rocks. <laughs> so I'm fine anywhere. And what about? Uh, go ahead, give me deception checks. <laughs> Or persuasion, as you know, Saga, you're kind of playing with truth and lying right now. So, whichever one. It's persuasion, but it's a five. Okay. Oof. <laughs> a persuasion of 19. 19. All right. All right. So, and uh, you've been, Larkanus is just being quiet, so keeping it, keeping it chill. Um, <laughs> they just look over at you, it's like, well that is all right well it was an absolute pleasure having you fall here and i hope you come on back to tucked away another time we would love to thank you so much for the meal for the bath for the wine it was all so nice i really love the creepy order of course of course well you come back anytime all right go Marie, I think it's time to start gathering up these plates. Okay. And they start gathering the plates up, and you see them all uh, kind of go about the day. Well, you have a great day. You have an absolute great time. Thank you for coming. Thank you. You should come back next time for dinner. We would love to. I'll help with the fishing next time. Oh, that will be just sweet. Maybe when a different fruit is in season. Oh, well, you know, you come on back and we'll have something better for you. You know, we'll be ready for you. And they gather their things and they seem like they're going inside their homes, seemingly leaving you to your own devices in the middle of Tucked Away. Just gonna look at the guys real quick and I'm gonna like point to where we came from and be like, all right, let's go. Now, is, is, is Saga okay? Can we, is, is, is she like, cause she drank that, right? Uh, give me a medicine check. I got 16. 16? You look her over, um, and you do see a little bit of a, some, a familiar, uh, as far as how sluggish she is. Mm-hmm. And there how and you notice how little she drank. So you recall from times in the monastery with certain brews that uh, some of the monks would create that would just knock you right out if you had too many of them. 
and you're seeing similar, but it seemed like she didn't have that much of it. So if, sure. if it is the same thing, it seems like it's, she'll be fine. Good thing she didn't drink too much. Okay. I was hoping it wasn't poison or something. I don't trust these guys. And Zaga's just like very pointedly not mentioning anything about the drink because it's freaked her out and she wants to just get out quickly. Okay. I just realized something. Uh, go back to the let's go. Ah. Oh, you're down to go to one of these other villages, uh, the Rush Limbaugh, or whatever it's called. Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, down. All right. You guys make your way back to the. I mean, a little bit. Of, how fast do you guys go? Where are our horses? Um, oh, back at the keep, right? Back, the horses yeah, the, are back at the keep. You guys are uh, on Caleb's uh, ferry. I'm starting at a normal pace because I'm trying not to look too suspicious. But once we get like a little bit away, I mm -hmm. will pick up. Okay. As you guys journey down the hill back into the more uh, muck of the swamp area, start heading over. You do see the, the ferry that's kind of just um, anchored right alongside and uh you cl I'll climb in and first thing you notice is Caleb is not there oh no and Saga actually says that in character <laughs> well I'm not leaving without her no we can't leave without her Ah, uh, they tried to drug me I think that they probably took her I didn't uh, want to say it in case you're listening, but that drink was spiked. I pull out my hand axe and I go, well, I guess we gotta go talk to them, don't we? Yup. Do we want to try to sneak? I can take off my armor to be a little quieter. Let me tell you, I've already intimidated the old lady. I feel like she's a problem. She was not phased nor more the threats of death. And they weren't low rolls, let me tell you that. What's a roll? I don't understand. So in my head, I have this thing wherever I make a choice. It's not a roll. It's got a roll on it. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes no sense, but okay. Alright. Well, hey, I sleep on soft rocks. Don't tell me what makes sense. Yeah, there are soft rocks in your head, but let's go get Caleb. Let's go. And then, so, um, yeah, I, I, uh, intimidatingly, I'm going to walk back. No, I don't care <laughs> at this point. Like, are I'm we, so like should, we, should we plan a little first? I guess I'll just be the distraction then. Uh, 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 you're sneakier than I am. If anybody should distract, it's me. They still think I like them. I, oh, I, how about this then? We'll... Me and Larkonis will sneak around the side as you talk to them and say you want more wine. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. You guys journey your way back up to Tucked Away. Um, with caution, uh, go ahead and give me a, a perception check as you guys get closer to the <laughs> Tucked Away. It's a natural 20. Natural 20. 23 for me. Alrighty, nice. Yeah, it's a 20. 20. 20. You, as you guys approach up, you immediately notice the town is empty. Um, and one of the houses, as you approach cause with those high rows, you did hear some rustling, like a ch like a chair falling over, <clears throat> in uh, one of the cabins. The map up on roll 20. Uh. Yeah, uh, let me um let me just now that things are a little different. I might wanna fuck around with this environment real quick. Alright. Let me uh get you guys on over to row twenty. We'll just have you guys all right about here. Launch gate. I'm T that's not me. <laughs> Okay, and we're gonna just move on over to. Cool. Um. So, which house had the rustling? 
Okay, we're gonna. It's uh, the house r right over to your right. Immediately to your right. There you heard some rustling. Did you guys hear that? Is, is it this one? It's the. It with the. No, no, that's where. Those are the bass. It's this the one. one? Oh, there you this go. One. Yes. Okay. I want to, we heard the rustling from that one? Yeah. Is that the one, uh, I'm like, hey, Sucker, maybe you should go knock on that door and see you. And be like, oh, I heard you guys here. I'm looking for some wine, looking for a good time still. Thought I'd come back. Yeah, yeah, you guys hide just outside of the house. Um, I'll yell real loud if I need you. I want to uh, be a little sneaky boy and get around to this cart and sort of hide in this cart. Wagon okay. That's here. Give me a oh, second. Jumping in the cart under the hay. Yeah? Yeah. All okay. right. Give me some uh, stealth checks. Nice. Yeah, you you feel pretty well hidden. Make sure that you guys can um, actually move your Broken characters. Yeah, Ellen, you're good. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna lay sniper style with my crossbow. And Sean, you're good. All right, you guys should be able to move your characters. All right, well, they hide. I'm just, I'm going right up to the door, going and I'm right knocking on it. Uh, Connor will also attempt to hide. Um, ooh, that's a really good roll. So Connor's, yeah. go Connor's going to go on to the side right here, see if he can see through the, um, see if he can check out the windows. Uh, Larkanus, what are we doing? Uh, oh, sorry, I moved myself. I'm hiding. Is this like a little... Though, so the, what you're next to are the baths that you guys are... That you guys were, uh, with Saga was in. So there's just yeah, these exactly. large barrels with water in them where, uh, you see a little fire pit under it. I hide from the you gonna... of that there. Okay. Go ahead and give me a stealth check. Yeah, I did the uh, 17. Seven... New stuff. Oh, if you already wrote a stealth check, then you can just yeah. tell me the number. Oh, yeah, it was 17. 17? Okay, good. Good, good. You guys feel like you're pretty well hidden. Um, all eyes are on the house. Uh, Saga, you approach and uh, you knock. Uh, you hear the knocks, and you just you you give me a give me a perception check. Thirteen. Thirteen. No, fifteen. 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 Okay. Fifteen. You the second you hear a knock, you hear some rustling, like a constant like a soft bang inside the house um, you, you don't hear any can't make out any voices but you do hear like rustling like consistent rustling I'm gonna just call out hey it's Saga I was wondering if maybe we could take some of that wine to go with us on the way back uh, again rustling a little bit of bane, a little bit more frantic, like constant motion, and you're hearing uh, like at this point now you hear like a consistent. Inside. Okay, breaking out the door at this point. Um. Okay. Okay. The second you go to kick in the door, is unlocked. <laughs> She's not smart, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so. You go in there with my crossbow, like I wonder if that door was unlocked. <laughs> so, the second you kick it in, the door just flings right open, and uh, you look around. You see, your you, it seems like it's a very simple cottage. There's a, a, a large uh, um, kind of family area in the center where there's a, it seems like a makeshift uh, stove and oven in the back. Um, off to the right, it, there seems to be a, a door that leads into what you would assume is a, a bedroom. You have noticed that um, the, the blinds where the windows would be are, compl are all shut. And um, the, there's a little chimney 
uh, in there, small, small smoldering fire, very, very, very lightly lit, and a uh, door closed leading to a bedroom. Okay. Um, do I still hear the rustling? It is, yes, from the bedroom. You still hear. All right, I'm gonna go open that door. Okay. In the meantime, while that is happening. Oh no. You open the door. And as you open the door, you hear a. And a little ball drops from the ceiling sill. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh no. 14. 14. As you see this little ball fall on the ground and this massive puff of gas comes over your face and you start coughing and I need you to let's see. You said, you said a 14 in constitution? Mm-hmm. You take two points of poison damage. Ow. And me covering your mouth it's consistently going it's just consistently pushing out smoke pushing out smoke at a surprisingly large amount um uh you you also see Kaleth, who's tied um she has, she's bound and gagged and she seems like she was on a chair the chair is over but her feet and legs and um her legs and arms are bound to the bed um in a, a, a thick chain Right. Am I feeling any sort of like adverse effects from the poison, or is there just like in general like, ow, this is hurting and I'm taking damage? You're, you're you feel the ow is hurting, and now you're feeling that lethargia, that le- le- lethargia from the wine. But now it's like, it's it's overwhelming. So you're you're you realize that you can't really be in here long, or else you're gonna pass out. Wait, I'm gonna very quickly take my cloak or a piece of like fabric that's on me, and I'm gonna cover my mouth and nose just to okay. try to sort of barricade it. Sure. Where I'm gonna ask? Wait, wait. wait. It's just regular poison, right? <clears throat> it's uh, poison, yeah? well, you don't know. You're not there. <sighs> I, I um, look at uh, I look at Larkanis and I'm like, is everything okay? I know, right? We don't know anything. We we don't see the smoke but or anything coming we're just... out. Like, yeah, you you do see Connor because he would have heard some of that creep around, and he is also going to go inside. I'm gonna look at Larkanis and I'm gonna point at the cottage next to that cottage and I go, Shut up. I okay. can be on fire. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Should I light the other cottage on fire while they're in this cottage? No, no, no fires. Not not yet. Wait, wait. Uh, I need you guys to give me it's, stealth checks for the conversation. <laughs> It's like a backdraft. It's fine. <laughs> no, you can't distract people with fires. They spread. That's... 22. That 22. Work. Okay. Got <laughs> with uh, 13. 13. <laughs> I'm a little frustrated, so I'm a little louder. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> no, you can't just set fire. <laughs> In the meantime, Saga, you see Caleb uh, tied, and Connor walks up behind you, and he immediately covers his mouth. Seems like he caught it quick enough but now the now the room you guys are in is like starting to billow up and again as you notice the blinds have been shut and it's now starting to and you guys on the uh, outside are starting to see little pieces of mist coming from the front door pushing out uh what do you what are you going to do saga i'm going to say connor open the windows Okay. And then I'm try to get to Caleb and just drag her out as fast as I possibly can. Okay. Um, he is going to try to open the windows. He rolled pretty low, but he did notice that air are shut from the outside, not from the inside. Seems Break like... him if I have to, I yell if he tells me that. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to try to break, de- break it down. De- <laughs> oh, that's a two. So he starts... <laughs> trying to bang, trying to open, he's trying to take his sword to try to yeah. wedge, it, wedge it out. It's not really working well. Um, you go to pull Caleb out, and again, you notice 
there's a chain connecting her to the bed. Uh, do I uh, do I hear Caleb fucking with the window? Uh, your passive perception Connor. is well. Give me a. You can give me a perception check, seeing as though you're paying attention to what's going on inside the house. I got a fifteen. Fifteen. You're hearing rustling. You're hearing movement, and now you're seeing this type of mist leave the front from the front door. But that's all you notice. I, I see the mist, and I look at Larkanis, and I go. And I do like it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to go in. I'm going uh, okay. to cover my mouth. I'm going to, yeah. I going jump, in? I jump over the bathhouse. Jump over the bathhouse right in there, and I'm just going. Okay. All right. You both rush in. Um. So, in the meantime, Saga, Um. he's going, oh, well. Connor's gonna try to break down the windows again. Oh, poor Connor. He's, Come on, Connor. Come he, on, buddy. He's, he's getting it in. It seems like he's actually he's making some headway in it, but these it's thick oak. I mean, the blinds are made out of thick oak. They seem like they're. It seems like almost like someone designed the very windows to shut and to really be put in place. Uh, but okay. it's going to take a little bit of time, but he is starting to make some headway. Uh, how are you going to get Caleb out? What are you doing? I am... I'm a barbarian, so I am, I'm going to try to break the chains. Okay. Um, go ahead and get me a strength check, but before you give me that strength check, I need you to make another constitution saving throw. That was coming. Ooh. Nope, nope, nope. Not one, not one. That, oh. Okay. You take another four points of uh, poison damage. Um, you're feeling very, very lethargic. If you, you know, if you get any more of that in your system, you're gonna pass out. And you see, and as that's happened to you, you hear Connor start <coughs> <coughs> as he took a big, he had, he took a big uh, p- gas of air and caught a good chunk of poison himself. Am I big enough to just move this whole ass bed? Hold on one sec. Hold on one sec, let me pull up Connor. considering it a large object? Damage. Okay, now, you guys walk in. Um, And as you guys walk in, you notice that the doors, that all the mist is coming in from the door. Uh, the open door uh, from the bedroom, and you're hearing Saga and uh, and uh, Connor coughing. You come in. As you're getting closer, I need you both to make a Constitution saving throw. Ooh. Uh, not natural twenty. Okay, great, great. You look. You, you immediately whoop, cover your mouth up. You're good. Yeah. You're, you, you're like, oh, you took a deep breath in, and he's like, okay, don't need to get this in. Solid. Larkanus? Eight. Eight. Are you resistant to poison damage, though, as a dragonborn? Oh, you're resistant. Yes. Okay, so you're, gonna t- you're not going to take as much. So um, you're only taking uh, two uh, of the poison damage. And you still feel good. Even though you did fail, you don't feel the level of lethargia that Saga's feeling right now. Seems like you're resisting that initial hit. But again, you know, you can't really be in here for much longer. Um, again, okay, so you guys see uh, Caleb. She's tied to the bed. Caleb has now passed out. She is completely unconscious. She is unconscious. Breathing, but she's knocked out. Oh, uh, Saga's on the floor breathing, and but not knocked out? No, Caleb is knocked oh, out. Kayleth. She's tied. No, I'm conscious. She oh. has chains around her arms, and her uh, her wrists, and her legs, and are they are connecting to uh, the bed. Kind of. Oh, hey, Eric, I just realized I never made that strength check after the, um, oh. the failed save. Oh, yeah, please, okay. please. Give me that strength check. Um, 21. 21. Yeah. And you start hearing like, and you break it right off 
and so she's still bound in chains but is no longer connecting to the bed and at that moment you all hear the front door <laughs> shut oh no and a big <laughs> lock put in place You guys, as you're noticing that, you guys have like another couple seconds before I have to give you guys to do another uh, constitution check. What are you doing? Well, I'm going to pull out. helping him bust down the window. Yeah, I'm going to uh, pull out my battle axe and start hitting the window. Yep, same axe. My axe is going off the chains that, that, are wrapped, that are wrapped around. Okay. Oh, um, give me. Go ahead, guys. Give me those uh, a strength checks to try to bang through the window. Um, and I've taken enough damage at this point that I'm, I'm raging. Yes. Thank goodness for that. Got a uh, 22 to hit. Nice. Well, these are just strength. You're just, you guys, it's, oh, it's a strength? window. I'm not going to have you roll to hit a window. Right. <laughs> 18. Hey, 18. what's this window's DC? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just seeing if you can just battle at, at it, try to chop away at this thick oak uh, fence. Uh, uh, blinds. What uh? What you guys roll? You said 18. 18. 18. Larkanus? 13. 13. All right. You guys, you guys are actually like really making headway. You guys start c- c- cutting into the woods. It's starting to pull apart a little bit. Some of the fumes are starting to leave the area, but it's still pretty thick with smoke. You, it's it's literally on the edge of being broken. I need you all to make one more. Constitution saving throw. Eleven. Ten twenty. Nice. Seven. Seven. Okay. Uh, you take uh, Larcanus. You only take one, and now you're starting to feel some lethargia coming on. You're like oh, starting to feel a little sluggish. Starting. <sighs> and Jago, you take three points of uh, poison damage. And you are on the cusp of, be- of passing out. Um, Saga, you're good, but again, you've been feeling pretty worn. And you know if you, you can't be in here any longer. So give me one more strain check, everyone, to get through this. 26. 26. Sorry, uh, no, 25. I can't do math. 25. <laughs> Everyone else, strength checks. 23. 23. Nine. Nine. Well, Larkanus and uh, Saga did the heavy lift. They, uh, I'm about to pass out. And it, the the, fin, the 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 window is now completely off its hinges. It's falling out. It's mostly debris now, and you you see the the mess is leaving. Uh, it's still emulating from that uh, that that ball that's still in the room with you guys. So you're still a little too close for comfort, but the window's open. Uh, do we see how Connor's doing from where we are, or are we are we now next to him? Uh, Connor is right there. Thank you for reminding me to roll for Connor. He is he is not looking good. He also seems like he's on the cuffs of passing out, but. And he seems like he's taking some damage, but he's on a thread. But the window's broken out. What are we doing? Uh, I'm just gonna get ready to like help everybody through the window who needs it. Okay, who's going in? Who's going? Okay, well Connor's gonna immediately take that as an opportunity. He is going to hop right I'm on help out. Everybody through the window because I'm immune to the poison. Everybody else, get the heck out of here. I'm taking this amount of damage. Uh, Larkan- <laughs> Larkanus got that seat next to the wing on the plane. <laughs> Look, I am the smallest <laughs> here. You guys need to get out first so that if you have to haul my ass out of here, it's easier. <sighs> Let's not argue about it. Get out. <laughs> Either way, Connor gets out with help. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I, I crawl my way out. Alrighty. Alrighty. And... Um, Larkanus, you hop out too, or are you waiting for Saka to leave? Uh, I'm definitely waiting for Saka. Okay, in that case, I'm gonna, okay, help me lift Kayla. We have to get her out. Yeah. Okay. 
as the last two who are you now our guys are about to lift her up. Both of you, is give me a constitution check. <laughs> I don't like 13? it much, by the way. <laughs> and 11, oh my god. I'm, I'm down, aren't I? Both, uh, you are down. Saga, you, yeah. as you as you and uh, Saga are lifting up Caleb, you just see Caleb like, take out, take a little bit too much of a breath, and her eyes get foggy, and she falls over passed out you um you again you don't you take only uh two points of uh poison damage you're starting to feel a little just a little bit but you have a natural resistance to poison so you're able to kind of hand a little bit better but you are fully aware you cannot be in here much longer this is starting to tax you All right. Well, one's a five-two, uh, five-two, five-three tiefling, and one's a goblin. So, give me a, just give me a, a you can make it a, as far as putting them, like distributing your body weight, kind of hoisting them around. Yeah. You can do acrobatics I, or athletics. You can do acrobatics just, or athletics. Oh, okay. Oh, that's actually great then. Um, I just rolled a twenty-six. That is. Oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. So whatever you were gonna roll, you you immediately like. Huh! <laughs> and you just kind of flee them yep. right out of the window. They plummet, uh, but they are now in the open air. You said athletics. I have a plus seven. <laughs> you have a plus seven athletics, and you rolled, what, a 19? Yes. Yeah. Dude, so, yes. Came in clutch. Uh, as Saga and, you, you know, one fell swoop, you toss them both out and hop out from there, and... I want, and as you guys whew, hop out the uh, the cabin, give me one second. Where are you? There you are. Um, Jago. Yeah. Uh, a 16 to hit. I was looking at, uh, uh, that meets my armor class. So, six hits, okay. Ooh. <laughs> As you are waiting for your friends to get back, striking you in the back is this cleaver hitting you on the, on the, your back shoulder blade. And lifting and kind of in this jumping motion, you see Marie, the old orc lady, well you in the back. And as the blood ah, hits you in the back and blood starts streaking down, you see her licking the blood off. Time for dinner, boys! I knew it! I knew it! I need you all to roll um, initiative. I'm still unconscious. You yes. are still unconscious, but it's a different kind of poison, so I'll go ahead and roll initiative. Listen okay. here, you old hag. I am neither fruit nor onions. Eleven. Eleven also. Okay. Eleven. Five. Oof. Five. Arcanus? Rolled in eleven. Oh, God. Ooh, you guys can do a double team moves. See. As, as long as that move is getting me conscious, sure. Right. Yeah. Oh, now I roll a d20 when I'm just throwing my dice in the tray. How would you do that? Always <laughs> <Place> throws. <laughs> no, they're, don't worry, they're, they've all low rolled pretty low. The guy who played the Red Ranger on Power Rangers Wild Force is in prison for stabbing his roommate with a sword. Oh, what? <laughs> Talk about method acting. Right? That was terrible. That was bad. Okay. So we'll say you guys are outside of the window, all bunched up. 
here. Last one out. And we'll just get. Where's my Caleb? Caleb. Where'd oh, she she's go? out. Oh, where did she go? Uh, she's inside the building. Oh, there she is. Okay. And we'll just. And. Sleeping. That's all taken care of. Connor is up first, and he is going to immediately go for what he perceives as the biggest threat, and he's going to go after Gregor. And he's going to take his rape, his flame tongue rapier, and he's going to say Ignis and massive. <laughs> Flames illuminate the darkened, tucked away, and he's gonna slash at Gregor. That's a enough to hit. Um, it's like a 23 to hit, and he's going to damage four nine, giving Gregor nine damage. and church and do two more attacks that's a natty one <laughs> this is why you don't let me roll for you oh 2d6 fire damage thank you for telling me yeah Ooh, thank you for telling me that's eight more cool. but that that one was a natty one so he's gonna last strike that's 17 to hit which is their weight? Is their armor class? <laughs> Lucky die. Then be here, okay? <laughs> hey, don't shame the man. He's I know, I know, I know, I <laughs> know, I know, bro. Okay, bro. I'll, 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 I'll re-roll that die. I'll use the lucky die. I'll use the lucky <laughs> die. But first, we're gonna roll this one. Seventeen to hit. So, twelve. You're always after me, Lucky die. <laughs> <laughs> Like Seven plus like three. <laughs> three. Ooh, that was nice. It's Twenty-nine damage. I rolled high on that one. Twenty-nine. Ooh, that one hurt him. That one hurt him. And yeah, he'll use that lucky die to re-roll the one. But that was a two. So. Remind me which maneuver you have so that I can remind Eric. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. Thanks for being yeah. my backup. I love Battle Masters, so I'm happy to do this. <laughs> well, then I will happily give you Larkanus. No, please don't. I, I too. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that, uh, it is Larkanus' turn. I got plans for this old wench. Is this the old lady that's right here by? Yeah, right, right by um, uh, Jago is Marie, the old lady. Uh, Connor is facing off with Gregor, and you see the two tieflings, Erilyn and um, Holmes. Dang. It. Yeah, let me go ahead after is this guy, uh, Holmes. Holmes, okay. I got a crush on the other one, so I'm not gonna go towards her. <laughs> Get this dude with the. Wait, is um, I was conscious, right? Can I like? Who's conscious? Me? Can I give her some? Aga? You could. I to, like... You can spin. You can try to. Yeah. You can try to give her a little smacky smack. <laughs> oh my god! I don't want to hit her. <laughs> <laughs> 
like there's already a tension with that and uh <laughs> <laughs> really, like, 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 you know, I, I like picking up. Then what? Up what then what are you like, doing? What are you doing? I, I, I have to. Like, I, let me shake her furiously. If Saga were awake. She would be her. screaming at you to just slap her across the face and wake her up. Oi! I think she wants you to choose violence, but not <laughs> the way I chose violence. <laughs> Shake her, and I'm realizing it's not working, so I'm gonna slap her. Well, right. well, hold you. You use, use one if you go, if you're gonna use one just, if you actually attempt to shake her first, blood. you have used an attack to shake her, and you notice she is not waking up. So for your second attack, you're yeah, gonna try to hit her. To her just be a weak. Yeah. Okay, yeah, roll to I'll, hit. I'll go ahead and step <laughs> With advantage, as she is passed out in your arms. Yeah, I just rolled. I just rolled. Hold on. What'd you roll? It's going to be an unarmed strike, right? Yeah. Um, uh, 16. Hey! Hits. Hits. All right. Um, well, roll damage. <laughs> Well, oh, because you're kidding. pulling back, I want to I want to I want to half the damage because you are actively not trying to really well into her. They're pulling their punches. They're pulling their punches. Uh, that's unarmed. That's six for damage. Six. So that so you rolled twelve for damage, and so it's six. Or did but you roll no, six? I rolled, no, no, no. I rolled the six. I okay, so, so uh, Saga, you take three points of uh, bludgeoning damage, but you are awake. Conscious. Yeah, you I love are that. conscious. <laughs> and uh, for my bonus action, yeah, for my bonus action, I want to hit this guy. Or do I need to move? Uh, no, you're close. You're 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 within your movement. I'll say that you okay. first. You dealt with uh, Saga first, and then you turn around and move because you you guys are fighting pretty close together, and you I, you have a movement speed enough to get there. Okay, so yeah, for my bonus action, I'm gonna do a fury of blows on this dude, choosing violence. Let me double check something. Yeah, go for it. Let me. Ooh, um, this might be a weird question, but could I attack the stunning strike onto Fury of Blows since it's a special? I think you have to hit first for stunning strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to see if I could. You know, yeah, that's gonna hit. That's gonna be a. That's like a tool. Yeah. Hit him with a right hook. Hit him with a jab. <laughs> Go for it. Roll to hit. His ass. Uh, yeah. That's your flurry of blows, uh, <laughs> ringtone. <laughs> yeah, so so I hit, uh, was that 24? That's 24 that, hits. Strike on that? Yeah. Can I stun him? Uh, oh, you were doing flurry of blows, right? Yeah. Yeah, so flurry of blows is just, you're, you get two more hits. Yeah, no, no, I'm asking, can I attack on um, stunning strike, because it's a special, onto the hit? The initial um, hit it. I believe. Is that possible? Uh, let me double check to see if there's uh, because that I am not. So when you hit with a melee weapon attack, you can spend one key point to make the target stun until the end of the next turn if it fails a Constitution. I mean, it doesn't say that Flurry Burls can't be the the hit, so yeah. sure. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so it's going to be a con save. Yeah. Uh, And you're hitting. Um, what's the what's the DC? Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. District of Columbia. Yee, that's where I live. So he rolled a thirteen, so that's a save. So he's not stunned. All right, whatever. Let's go damage them. Awesome. That's a nine for the first hit for damage. Yep. Alrighty. Second one was a 12. 12? 12 to hit? Yeah. 12 misses. Yeah. I knew it. All right. Yep. And that is it for me. All righty. 
moving it over to Saga. Right. I am going to switch gears because I was just looking at all the Battlemaster stuff for Connor. Um, but what I'm going to do is I am going to... You know what? This work lady sucks. We're going to move up and flank her and attack with the axe. All righty. Flanks red hot. <laughs> Um, that is going to be a 28 to hit. 28 hits. For... 10 points of damage. Alrighty. Raging. I started raging at the beginning of my turn. <laughs> <laughs> sure. No problem. As you get up, right. rawr, run into a rage, you come in, going straight for the old lady, and you slash at her from behind. Shrieks back as your blade cuts through. What was your second hit? Um, 21. 21 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Oh, no. I can't tell if this is a 7 or a 1 on these die. Hold on. That's a 7. Yay, I like that. Uh, that's a 12. 12 points of damage. 12. All righty. As you slash in and they come around and try to... It was like, you're realizing... This old, old lady is beefy. She's just got muscle on muscle, and as she is. <sighs> and then bonus action, the tiefling woman is in my storm aura, so she needs to make a deck save. Tiefling girl, Erilyn, she will. That's a um. You said what? What's the save? Uh, DC 14 dex save. Dex. Okay, that's failed. She failed. That's a nine. She takes one whole point of damage. One whole point of lightning damage to Erilyn as you're as you're coming down and the lightning just streaks around, hitting uh, hitting Erilyn. Erilyn kind of catches her in the eyes and she kind of covers up, also holding a little uh like a rustic uh, a rusty knife. Mm. All right, that's my turn. Jago, you are up. All right. Um, so is the old lady like facing? Uh, she's uh, facing you. Saga now? No, no. Oh, she, she's facing me. She still? got hit in the back, so she's just shrieking, but she's still engaged with you with you in combat. Cool. I want to, uh, <laughs> for my first attack action, bless you. Uh, I would like to tackle her. Okay. To the ground. So you're gonna try to grapple? Yeah, I want to do that and try to get that cleaver out of her hand and kill her with the thing she hit me in the back with. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's been a while since I've done grappling, so give me a sec. I'm a big boy, too, so everything is done a little larger. Yeah, go ahead. So I'm going to have to add a little bit of assistance. I'm trying to remember what do I roll for grappling. Uh, where are you? There you go. Isn't it just uh, raw strength? Yeah, yeah, strength versus strength. Yeah. All right. Strength. Thank you. Needed that. Needed that. This is my brain just stopped working. All <laughs> right. Strength versus strength. To the old lady. How strong? I, this old lady's real strong, isn't she? We'll see. <laughs> Ooh, not on that roll. So. Good. That's a, I got a eleven. I got a, I got a nineteen. Nineteen. You kind of grapple her in. She is grappled. She can't move. Um, what would you, what, for your uh, next, uh, for your next attack, what would you like to do? Um, I would like to uh, slam her to the ground. Like, I want to grab her and then mm. just, like, DDT her. Okay. okay. <laughs> roll, roll to hit. <laughs> Body slamming this old lady. Got a 24. 24. I just rolled a strength. That hits. So go ahead and give me that unarmed strike. All right. Actually, oh, it's a plus nine on that. So that was a 27. Nice. Cool. And it's actually just six damage. Six. Okay. As she <laughs> slam around the ground, and she's and she kind of buckles back a little bit. She is prone. And um, as she's uh, 
So I want to take a bonus action to give her a uh, to curse her as I uh, as I bring her to the ground too. Okay. Uh, it's gonna be the uh, uh, blood curse of bloated agony. So for the next turn until the end of my next turn, she has disadvantage on strength and dexterity checks and takes one d8 necrotic damage if uh, she takes more than one melee or ranged attack during its turn. Nice. As you speak these incantations and the blood that's flowing from your back kind of loops over to your front and it just kind of dives into her and wraps around her eyes and mouth and you see the glow of your of your uh, magic and it's just <sighs> raging it seems like it's affixed on her as your spell is casted and if that uh, does it let me take 1d6 damage because mm-hmm. your boy used magic and that ends my turn. All righty. And you see, as you see through bloody teeth, Marie's like, get him, Gregor! And Gregor looks over at Connor. It's like, my pleasure, Ma. And he's going to go and strike at Connor because he is right in front of him. If he misses, don't forget, he has a reaction. Yes, I believe... Yeah, I, I, I'm fairly uh, kind of aware of his stuff. <laughs> I think he has parry and he has shield. So if I recall, let's see. Yes, has repost, repost, however you pronounce that. And you can add a 40 AC. Three to five. Um, and then also if he misses, oh, the four is from, oh, defensive duelist. Yeah. And then he also has the repost. If they miss, he can take an attack at him. <laughs> so that's a let's see that doesn't sound plus, but no that's a miss so he is going so as a reaction Connor's going to try to swipe at him but that's also a miss so you know it is what it is no wait no wait that's the plus seven yeah it that does hit yeah yay so I wanna whoop, trying to do all this stuff at the same time ah you know Macaulay Culkin and Brenda Song were dating, let alone had a baby uh, a couple days ago. Hey, what? Yeah, Brenda Song and Macaulay Culkin had a child on April 5th. Six, 11. Plus 2d6 fire. You know what to do with this information? It's a weird childhood oh Venn diagram. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Whoa. I gave you a. London Tipton and the Home Alone sword. Really As mean. Connor. Swipes back up as Gregor misses with his axe and he swipes up in, re- in reply. He takes like 23 points of damage as the flame rapier <laughs> kicks off right up the line of Gregor and he roars in anger. And let's see. And. Alright. Oh, that does it. That does it for his turn. So next is. Holmes. And Holmes. Digging on uh, Holmes, digging. Holmes is going to go for uh, Larcanus. It's going to roll to hit with his rusted hatchet. That's a natural 20. And so apologies to Larcanus. You take. Take 22 slashing damage. Real damage. And one uh, poison damage. That is some heavy ass damage. Bruh. <laughs> yeah, we're all I get him from the ground, I look over like, what the fuck? Ah, you see this thin, almost skeleton like tiefling. Ah, like, just stab at Larcanus. Give it like a big gush of blood coming from Larkanus's chest. And as the blood falls on the tiefling, he just lathers his up. He's licking every drop. Oh, I hate this. <laughs> Man. I'm ready to put this village to the ground. <laughs> Dude, we definitely should have went with the distraction fires. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Relax. Sometimes I'm right the first time. And then you sometimes I'm right the third time. That will do it for uh, Holmes' turn. Now, Aralyn is going to run, completely charge at Saga. Oh, let me... Sure. Do, 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 do. Let me take that sleepy thing off of you. She's gonna... And you see... And you see Aralyn running with two rust, you know, rusty knives. She's like, kill you, kill you, kill you. And she jumps to attack Saga. That is, uh, not that good. 15 to hit. No? Mm-mm. No? My AP is, oh wait, I put my armor back on after I went swimming. So let me double check that. Yeah, my AC is a 16. 16, alrighty. That did. Then she, you're still you're sitting pretty. No, no fuss, no muss. Uh, now it takes it over to Marie. The old gets up and she jumps directly on uh, Jago and she's going to bite at the wounds that are around him. That's a, um, that's a, ooh, that's 25 to hit. Tight, yeah, that hit. <laughs> That'll hit any of us. Yeah. You know what, I always, th- I always thought about how annoying it was when a DM would say that. You know, I was like, oh, that's a, t- that's a 32 to hit. But as a DM, it feels good. So... <laughs> I, She's also oh, going no, like, to you can get, like armor artificers with ACs of like 25, 26. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Throw a wizard level in there and just, you know, give them shield and they're, they're gone. They're, yeah, it's ridiculous. Get... I'm playing an artificer uh, right did now. Did she also take disadvantage on all her strength and dexterity to get up? Well, oh, so dexterity to get up? Well, it's just half her movement to get up. It's not a dexterity yeah. check to get up. Oh, word. She also takes 1d8 necrotic damage. 1d8 for necrotic. I will add that in. She ta- and as you see the blood boiling on her face, just piercing away uh, at at her skin. And then you, you see she's taking the damage. Um, she, You're going to, for the bite, ooh, you take 15 piercing damage as she goes and just ah, right into... Uh, Right into like your collar, and pops down, licking, and take a deck to the top of the round. Connor is going to try I'll to look put and do the same thing with my own blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's so disturbing. <laughs> Where do you think I get my magic from? <laughs> In the middle of my rage, I'm just gonna Jago. What the? What are you doing? <laughs> doing it this whole Spaghetti. time, honestly. I've been doing this whole thing. Get it? Kind of my thing, you know. Alrighty, now it's up to Kana. Will Kana save the day? Will he end this battle? He is. Oh my God. <laughs> he ain't doing shit, Connor. Uh, yeah, that's a let's see, seven plus seven plus four, eleven to hit. That does not hit. So for his second, you know what? No, he wouldn't do it because Connor doesn't like to use his magic. So Connor won't use his magic, even though it would be useful. <laughs> Five. That's twelve to hit. Nah, that's a nada. So let's see. Nope, he's pretty good with health-wise, so he's not going to do that. So that will end his turn. Bring it back to Arcanus. Yes, all right. Yeah, I'm going to hit this dude with the stick. Take this crap. God, why? Oh, my dude. Okay, first hit is definitely missing. <laughs> That's a uh, 12. 12, 12 misses. You're... You go swipe at air, uh, at Holmes. He just ducks right under it. And it's... All right, I'm I'm gonna 
know there's I wonder if you taste you. like frog. Uh jeez, that's disturbing. I'm gonna swipe at the legs now. Swipe at the legs. <laughs> oh baby, yes, that's a uh, dang, that's like a twenty-eight. Twenty-eight, you come around and you just well him into the knee. Go ahead and roll damage. damage. Alrighty. You just crack him in his knee. You hear a... You, you even hear a little bit of a give and you seem like ah. Now I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do Fury of Blows. Yeah. Go ahead. Roll the hit. Oh my god. Why are we doing this? <laughs> oh, this... <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> Twelve. Miss. You, you're going into... Flip the, the, you flipped your quarter step around and you're going to just do a pop, 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 pop over and over again, but he he's like, he surprisingly has incredible head movement and he's he <sighs> This dude's pissing me off. Another I'm going to try it. Hit again. <laughs> okay, that one's better. That's a dirty 20. Yeah, yeah, that hits. Oh, baby. Uh, that's a yeah, I keep losing where I am. That's an 8 for damage. 8. Alrighty. As he was dodging, eventually you popped him right in the face and then hit him a few more times in the throat and chest as you started really getting in on him. Um, and he takes that damage. Still looks like he's pretty good. <laughs> well, that'll do it for your turn. Saga, you are up. Unless there's uh, any... Uh... No, that was your bonus action. Yeah, Never mind. It, yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on the, on the tiefling woman. So uh, two attacks with the axe. Go for it. Um, that's gonna be a fourteen to hit. Fourteen hits. Ooh, all right. Um, eight points of damage. Eight points as you slash at Erilyn. And you... then, oh, I can attack. Thirteen to hit. Thirteen, just barely misses. All right. Uh, and then deck save from her for the lightning. That's a uh, uh, 16. All right. So she makes the save, but she still takes three points of lightning damage because I actually rolled well. All right. As you as you still clash her and she, as she covers up and the lightning just starts singeing her, her forearms and she just is streaking <laughs> with the pain. But she's taking it. She's taking it. And Jago, you are up. If you're talking, I can't hear you. Sorry. Uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, so as she like backs away like that, I notice like the electricity hurts her like that. So you see the scimitar slide out of my arm blade mm -hmm. and I'm gonna use my crimson right to uh, make it electricity damaging. Oh, okay. And I'm going to uh, just sort of try to stab at her in the gut. Okay, you're 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 stabbing at Marie. Yeah. Okay. Cause uh, cause uh. Oh no, you stabbed the other one, huh? The, the other one got hurt like that. But yeah, I'm gonna stab at Marie because she's fucking biting me. Yeah. As you as again the just adding to the sound of crackling lightning from uh, Saga, it gets a little bit bigger, and you guys start creating this area of effect of lightning kind of piercing, and the, the streams of lightning kind of connect both of your blades as they find each other as you stab at Marie. Go ahead and roll to hit. Hell, yeah, that's a good hit. Let me look at... Oh, that's a reaction. Scimitar plus nine. 27. 27 hits. Roll, roll that damn much. We're looking at seven slashing and then six lightning damage. Seven and six. Nice. She's starting to starting to look like she's starting to get a little bloodied as you slash and the lightning courses through her. She's like, mm, come on. Come on. And then as she says, come on, I'll use my second attack action to just uh, slice her across the face. All right. Go ahead and roll to hit. 19. 19 hits. Roll damage. Ooh, 
10 slashing. Ooh, nice. And two lightning. Again, the slashing cuts right across, leaving a, a rigid scar along her face as blood slowly pulls down as it runs down her face and cheek looking even more menacing with her tusks now covered in her own blood lightning kicking off of her face with the branding of your of your blood magic scorching all over her and she's looking pretty worn but she's like she's still got some fight left in her and then um so every time i hit somebody with my crimson right feature it uh, it can brand them so uh she's gonna have the brand on her so every time she damages somebody else she's gonna take one psychic damage all right and now uh, additional brand of pierces right in front of her forehead as searing into her look you in in this fight that she's looking bloody she's looking far more petrifying in this death battle taking it over to the top of the round gregor is going to swipe at connor that's a natural one so that's a nothing from him so I'm actually going to give Connor an attack of opportunity for that. But Connor has me rolling for him, so nothing happens. So that's, oh, 11. No. <laughs> that's 11. Um, th let this be a, a lesson to you guys. If you ever miss a game, don't have me roll for you. <laughs> it's, it's, literally give it to any other player. <laughs> so... All right, we're gonna. Uh, uh, but that does it. But that does do it for Gregor's turn. He is not doing as well as he should be. Uh, taking it back over to Holmes. Holmes is going to try to strike at Larcanus. That is with, with his with his hatch with his rusted uh, blade, and that is um, a fourteen to hit. Does that Misses. hit Larcanus? Nope, miss. Miss. All right, these are your moments, guys. I have um. Da, 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 da. Oh, I have Tipsy Sway, which allows, like, if somebody tries to swing at me and they miss, they can hit somebody else if they're within five feet. <laughs> is, this, is this guy, is Gregor close enough? Let's see. Let's see if Gregor <laughs> is close enough. Let me get my little, let me get my little swine. Let's see. Click him. He is 10 feet ah, away. Damn Sorry. All right. Right. Well, cool, cool, cool. Continue. <laughs> Alrighty. Bring it back to. Uh, move that around. Ah, oh, no, go away. I don't need that on my screen. Oh, there we are. Okay. Bringing it back over to. Erilyn, who's going to strike at Saga. She is going to just jump as you are shorter than her. She is going to go over to you, grab you, and try to bite into your neck. Try me. That is an unnatural 20. Fine, it works. <laughs> <laughs> and you take... You take seven piercing damage. No. As she... And you see these... Now, as, as you're feeling it, her razor-sharp teeth bite into you and scrape along your skin as she starts lathering up some of the blood and mm. and that kind would, of, no stop that's gross stop that and I'm bring it back over to marie is disgusting bring it back over to marie she is going she is now kind of like like in a in a daze and she's just kind of start, ah, just start slashing at you. She is going reckless as she is in a berserking rage. Oh. Okay, that is uh, well, still pretty low to hit. That's a 16 to hit. Which is my AC. That's your AC, so that hits. So that's it. Oh, I rolled a one for damage. So that's nine. You take nine... Uh, Slashing damage and um oh and oh uh, no nine slashing damage three poison damage. She takes one necrotic damage and she takes and again the the thing sears and you see ah, with every strike. So 
So she takes that one necrotic damage. Bringing it back to the top of the round. Connor, fucking do something. There you go. That hits. No, you tell him to do something with your that, own friend. That's what he yeah. I know. <laughs> Six and two D six. None of these fools have died yet. No, no, they oh. have not. So this one, six, and eight. Not a lot of damage, sir. Not a lot of damage to Gregor as he slashes again. The flames screaming around, but he looks pretty rough. So he's gonna take one more swipe. Mm, that is a miss. Again, as he tries to swipe over, uh, Gregor, Gregor just ducks down. Again, kind of blo incredibly bloodied and burn marks. Had half his face is charred. And that will do it for Connor. Larcanus, you are up. All right. I'm just trying to, man, I got to kill this dude. Uh, let's go. Trusty quarterstaff, once again. Uh, okay. Um, I want to crack his other leg. <laughs> crack his other leg. Looking at a, a dirty 20. Dirty 20 hits. Oh, damn. I was feeling good about the D8. It's good. Um, <laughs> looking at a 7 for a, uh, for damage. Alrighty. As you start flipping around and hit him at his other knee. Ah! Alright. And quarter staff again coming towards his face. Okay. Yes. That one's, uh, that's like a 20, I'm sorry, math, man. <laughs> well, if it's 20s, 22. you hit. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's up, it's, yeah, 22. Um, can I, can I attack a stunning strike onto that? Go ahead. Uh, let me, uh, let me roll for him. Oh, that's a natural 20. Damn it. All right, well, it just hits him in the face then. All right. <laughs> let me do this damage roll. Uh, that's a nine for damage. Nine for damage. After you crack him in the knee and he streaks in pain, you flip it around, kind of do that cool little, op like when it's when the staff spins around your neck and you flip it, catch it, and well him in the face. Taking nine. He's starting to feel a little roughed. He's starting to feel like you're starting to put some damage on him. Seeing some bone, some bruising and welts. He's starting to have a big whelp of an eye. Alright, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit him with some Fury of Blows now. Fury of Blows. Use those key points. Yep, 17. 17 hits. Uh, Ooh, yes, nice. That's a 9 for damage on that one. Nice, 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 nice. And you start flipping her over, it's just pop, 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 pop. With, in the face with the, like a little pool cube, just constantly jabbing at him. Is he still alright? He's still he's still got fight in him, but he's starting. Oh. Yeah, I, I try to hit again, and uh, it's a nine. Nine, okay. nine misses. He he just kind of covers up, <laughs> and just and he takes all the damage on his arms. He he covers up pretty well. Uh, that will do it for uh, your uh, turn. Do you have one more thing? That oh, I what's up? Film to use. Uh, when I use fury of blows, I can use drunken technique to disengage. So I just want to like. Okay. Yeah, just turn it back up a little bit. Yeah, as you, as you all see now that Larkane, it seems like after a few times of battle, is starting to show some of his monastery training, has a little bit more hop in his steps, a little bit more, like, a little bit more sway. And after he hits him around, he, he has this kind of familiar sway that you once saw Sal fight with as he kind of creates a distance where... Um, where Holmes doesn't seem to be able to hit, he has disengaged from his opponent seamlessly. Saga, you are up. All right, uh, I am gonna hit the Tiefling woman again. Um, let's do right. this. Throw to hit. Oh, Larkin, did you want to move anywhere? Uh, I just like stepped him back a little bit, just just like out of reach. Just out of out of his initial reach. Yeah. So, okay, go ahead and move your character like five feet back wherever you want to move him. He can't take attack of opportunity, so whatever you want to move your character. So, yeah, uh, I think I got him. I okay. Moved him. Cool. Yeah. All right, Saga, what was what was your roll to hit? Nat one. Nat one. 
So, uh, let's try to hit her again. Go ahead. 16. 16. 16 hits. Yeah, don't do math. Uh, that's going to be 17 points of damage. Nice. Jeez. You know, who needs to roll... Who, who needs to get in one if you get max damage on the second attack? That's how that works, right? So sure. The same as two normal attacks. The balance. Yeah, the balance. Oh, and I can't get a from her for the lightning if she's still up. That's a, a twenty to. That's a, a twenty. Okay, well, one point of lightning damage. One point of lightning damage as you slash at her. She seems like out of everyone, she's doing pretty good. Uh, but you slash at her. She covers up again. It cr crosses right along her, but she, you cut right into her, and the lightning kicks off, and she's you're starting to see some smoldering from her. I've been doing something wrong. What's up? So we're at level 10 now, which means that Saga gets to roll 2d6 for that lightning damage. Oh. So she's actually three points of damage in total. Ooh, three total. And so I'll add three. <laughs> I'm also at level 10. Let me see. As the lightning, it like, as she's like, oh, I'm okay. But then more lightning comes around at her. <laughs> So like, wait, I've got more lightning. <laughs> Just take that. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Does that do it for your turn? Any movement? Any bonus? Oh, that's my turn. I'm just going to keep swinging my axe at her until, I, until I'm done. Okay. Go ahead, Jago. Uh, I'm going to stare Marie down in the face and just, uh, to just come at her one more time with the scimitar. Okay, we're out ahead. Natural 20. Ooh, there you go. Someone showed up. Go ahead. Which means my other feature plays into effect um, where when I hit somebody with a critical and I have my crimson right, they become frightened of me until the next turn. Oh. All uh, right. So she is... Demol. Thirteen slashing, nice, and six lightning damage. Thirteen slashing. That's you doubled the dice already. Yeah. Oh, and you and how much uh, of the extra damage? Uh, six lightning. Six lightning. Again, with lightning just kind of coursing around the area, and again slapping at her. And you slice her. Uh, now, does she have to roll for the frightening to being frightened? Um, here it says, um, where is it? I just had it and it disappeared. It is a feature. And this dog is just crying right now, sorry. Uh, where did it go? I, where is the fear? Where's the other? No, there's no roll. When you score a critical hit against a creature while using the weapon, uh, they are frightening me until my next turn. It's okay. part of my... Because uh, I uh, I took a Crimson Right focus with the Great Old One, so it's like a feature of that. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, she is frightened. Nice. Until the end of your next turn, so she will not... I wonder if class he was, and now I finally know. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, she is looking fucked up. She is now hunched over, kind of barely holding onto her hatchet, and like one of her eyes just kind of gone. Just she looks pretty rough. But yeah, that, and as she looks that rough, I'm gonna be like, "I can do this all day," and come again with my uh, <laughs> next attack. Go ahead. Ooh, twenty-four to hit. Twenty-four hits. Roll damage. 10 slashing, okay. two light. Two lightning. How do you want to do it? Uh, so I'm going to come through and I'm going to run up and just sort of uh, do that thing where I stab her and then she comes closer on the blade as she comes closer to me. <clears throat> yeah. And then as she spits up a little blood, I'm going to... Uh, she kind of just keeps her deadlock eyes on you as you lick the blood. She, Her eyes kind of go white but she never breaks eye contact and she never loses that that grit 
on her uh, teeth as she just kind of slacks dead, staring at you. Um, so she's dead, right? She is dead. Cool. So that uh, brings up my reaction. When a creature you see within 30 feet of you drops to zero hit points, I can use my reaction to give that creature a final act of aggression to make a single attack against a target I see. Okay. So I'm going to slide her off like a shish kebab and send her... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and send her towards uh this is uh who's um the one in saga's fighting erilyn erilyn and just uh frenzy attack her strongest attack because i don't have her <laughs> her strongest <laughs> attack okay yeah all right i, I just natural I, I wrote a natural 20. are you fucking kidding me <laughs> are you fucking kidding me <laughs> just a wee little bit of necromancy <laughs> You did that? Nice! This is the first time I've ever seen a dead body like moving around other than like our enemies. I'm like, what the fuck is that? What is that? What? As you guys see, Jago plunge his blade into, into Marie, sliding it out. As she's about to fall over a lamp, you see the blood that's been all the branding, all the all the different types of arcana. As she's about to fall over, like gravity immediately stops. And she unnaturally hoists back up with the blood constantly circling around her. And she takes her hatchet and turns around and immediately goes to slash at Erilyn. And unsuspecting, just not even seeing it coming. And she drives her hatchet right into Erilyn's neck um, for... Fucking kitchen me. <laughs> for 24... <laughs> <laughs> slashing damage. Nice. Now, now showing Aaron Lynn being like, <laughs> and, she, and I'm guessing that that's it. And that then, ends my turn. Yeah, I, I burned it every. <laughs> as she's striking out, is she? She's not like a battle on the field. That she can only do that one hit. Yeah, it's 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 one action. Okay. And like, uh, yeah, and so th then she just pops a back down. As she does, as after she does that attack, all the blood magic, all those rites fade away, start trickling down, and Marie f collapses on the ground, dead. That's not a once per day thing. That just was, says whenever a creature drops to zero hit points, y'all. Oh. Isn't that a blood curse though? Can you only do it as many times as you have curses. I can do those as much as my level, so I can do ten of them if I read it right. Because it, it's a. I'm playing my blood hunters really wrong. Oh my God. If I read it right, because it's a reaction, not like a regular curse spell. Uh, so. Like yeah, because uh, it's to amplify it burns the hemoglo uh, it burns. Right. The uh, so you can do it regular, because uh, they, they don't work as spells because of reactions. Nice. Oh Jesus! If I read it right, yeah. Otherwise, it's like my Hellish Rebuke, I think, gets a once per day, but the Misty Step, Shadow Blade, Detect Thoughts, and Cloud of Daggers also once a day, and then the rest I can just do. Wow. That's, yeah. That's Broken, lucky. But that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, brings it to Gregor. Mr. Misses Every Shot, and he it is now in a Berserker Rage, and he's going to strike at Connor... Well, at least that was 11 plus 5, that's 16, that's 16. But Connor is going Boom. to use his yes. defensive, as he's coming down with his, Connor flips the blade around and just uses his defensive duelist to just slide it right, the blade careens right off of his rapier as he increases his AC to a plus 4 and is absolutely fine. I did that right. I'm happy for myself. <laughs> Look at us remembering all of Connor's stuff. <laughs> Yo, the blood hunters are broken as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so a blood, the blood maledict feature means you can do these spells as many times as your blood hunter level, which is 10. But at level six, you can do the blood maledict feature twice, which technically would mean 20. But also, dip a take a take a rogue dip with a blood hunter, and give them sneak attack. Oh, so uh, broken. Don't just don't do that. <laughs> just 
I almost put Rogue on my mark. Rogues are, like, if Rogues stay hidden, they can just kill anything. I already have a, I also have Surprise Attack. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so. She takes no damage. She just <laughs> got all of her barbarian stuff. So she doesn't take a lot of damage while she's raging. And then add evasion and um, uncanny dodge to that. And she just she just doesn't take damage. Yeah, I would I would need, for me to allow something like that, a barbarian rogue, <laughs> like you better have the best backstory to justify how you are a raging berserker barbarian but understand the, the the subterfuge of stealth, you know. The Hulk. <laughs> you, you got a Bruce Banner and you got you a got Hulk. a Bruce Banner and <laughs> that's how you do it. That's how you do it. God damn it! <laughs> All right, bringing it over to Holmes. Holmes is going to, after seeing uh, Larkanus kind of back away from the fight, um, disengaging, um, and seeing. Uh, See Marie go down after getting stuck. Holmes like ma, and he's just going to run, run over to uh, Jago and try to and go for a hit. Oh, I think he's coming towards me. So like, I get ready and then he goes. <laughs> and then he goes <laughs> like waving at somebody in the hallway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So that's a 18 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Okay. Oh, so that's a... I'm like genuinely sad he didn't want to continue the fight. I'm like... As he hits me, I go, but he was right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm right here. You <laughs> killed his ma. So it you take 12 uh, slashing damage and three poison damage. Ooh. Not gonna lie, guys, that hurts. <laughs> that hurt. And now bringing it over to Erolyn. She is going to strike at Saga. That one's better. 17 to hit. That'll hit. Okay. And you take... Oh, that's not a lot. So 12 uh, slashing damage and 3 poison damage. Oh, alright. I can't even have that poison. Bring it back over to Connor. Connor, this is the moment. This is the. That's a natty one. Uh, <laughs> oh God. no! Wow, wouldn't it be great if Connor ever used magic missile? But oh well. <laughs> We're I'm playing to your in, character. I'm covered in blood. I'm like, you don't need to use any of magic. It's fun. <laughs> Oh my that was me, buddy. Oh my god, that's a two. I wrote a one and then a two. How does that even Oh my god. Connor, what do you got? What do you got, Connor? Let me see. Bonus actions. No. <laughs> As part of making this attack. Um now I have to look at your equipment. How many you, Connor, only has one dagger, and he never picked it back up after he threw it to hit the bunny. So, that dagger is no longer there, so he cannot throw it. He's gonna need like a like a kunai, like a chained dagger situation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He absolutely is gonna need something like that. Uh, all right, well that does it for Connor. Larcanus, you are up. I'm gonna go ahead and flank this dude who didn't finish his fight with me. Um, I'm gonna use my stick uh, and I'm swinging for the back of his head. Okay. I'm right here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, a natty 20. Come on. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. I wanna I wanna just swing my stick around and go, I'm right here. Just right in the back of his head. Alrighty. Roll that damage. D8. Oh, D8, why are you screwing me over? It's an uh, 8 for damage. Okay. <laughs> that you rolled an 8? Or you rolled a for 4? Damage, yeah. No, 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 I mean, it's a, I rolled a, I rolled a 3 on. Uh, oh, on so five, making it a 6. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, 8. 8. 8 damage to Holmes. 
As again, you crack on the back of his head and he kind of falls forward a little bit. Another one. Oh, wow. 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 Uh, well, it's a 10. <laughs> misses. 10 misses. All right, we're gonna go with the Fury of Blows because I'm I'm actually frustrated that he did not want to continue his fight with me. I'm Unless my die screws me over, what the a nine? Nine? <laughs> no. You he is. You are hitting nothing but air. You're swiping. It's weird. Yeah, I, wait, I'm right I have here, advantage? and he's just dodging. Are you? Are you right? <laughs> <laughs> this run to 13 for the second 13 just barely misses as yeah. you're like you're about to really cleave him in and it. it's coming it's coming it's coming and he just dodges right out of it there was no advantage on that flank <laughs> let us see dang it all right yeah, he was fucking strong, you know. You're not flanking, though. You're not. No, you're, like, right in front of him. You're not flanking. All right, all right, all right. Like, all if right. Connor I'm hit gonna, him, I'm he gonna would gonna be flanking. Disengage. Yeah. All right, I'm going to disengage just out of his range. Not like he's concerned with me anyway. <sighs> As you back away, <laughs> you kind of back into uh, Kalith. Yeah. Cool. Let's put my back to her. It's just, she's, okay. she's been out for a there. while. Hold on. Let me roll for her. Oh. Well, look at that. She wakes up. <laughs> Dude, right, right as I like back into Well, Because like, I forgot to roll for her. So we'll just say as you backed away, you kind of nudged her. And she's still completely bound. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So but she's, she's awake now. But she's awake. And all righty. That will do it for now. Saga, you are up. All right, Erlen, we are finishing this. Uh, that is an 18 to hit. 18 hits. Great. Right. For... Like, I'm going to feast on your bones. As she says that, I just slam down on her with my axe and do 17 points of damage. Ooh. She is looking rough. And then we're going to do it again. As you slash down, you cleave off one of her horns and slash down along her eyes. Have I crewed on 19 yet? No, I do not. Um, 19 hit? 28? 28 hit. hits. Ooh, what's wrong with you? I say you she did. For 16 points of damage this time. 16. She is... So fucked up. As you All right, slash. lightning. Lightning time. Lightning time. That's a two. Uh, so she will take six points of damage. As I you, how still would you like can't to, not roll well on the how extra would, die. How do you want to do Oh, that? really? Yeah. That lightning damage you know, put it over the edge. She tried to cook us. This seems fair, and I'm just gonna go. You know what? You're for dinner, and I'm gonna zap her and fire her. As you as you cleave down on your your axe, and the lightning just starts, and she starts wiggling, shaking, steam coming off her her skin starts to turn a little bit into charcoal black as she falls over dead, her body twitching as the lightning just coursing through her. And then oh. I'm immediately gonna cringe at what I said because that was horrible. And Saga will realize, like, oh, why did I say that? And, and, and as you do that, she stands up and runs at home. <laughs> now, how far does Holmes have to be? Oh, he just uh, has to it, be in view. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, I get their range of attack for one action. Fucking kitty. Okay. <laughs> but, all right. So, that hits. And that hits as she's... And she's... Holmes is not see that coming but no it's roll it was 19 anyway uh d12 really really i'm rolling so well with <laughs> when i have to hurt myself as she comes and just sticks 
the her uh, her two her two uh, rustic knives in the back of Holmes and then falls over dead. Holmes takes 18 uh, slashing damage. He is looking fucking rough. And Jago, you are up. All right, I want to look him in the face, and I'm just gonna be like, "Good ball, my mate." And then I just want to like sort of slice him in the uh, in the side. Okay, roll to hit for the first hit. See if it works. Eighteen. Eighteen hits. It's the lowest I have rolled on those attacks today. Nine. Nine uh, slashing damage and one lightning damage. How do you want to do it? Lightning. It's always lightning. It is. It's always the lightning. I want to, uh, as I uh, as I chunk right into his side, I want the lightning to surge through the blade, and it sort of just makes it easier to slice through him. All righty, so as you do. Like anime style, it like slides through, and then when I'm walking away, you just see. Ah. <laughs> as you have carved him in half as he's falling down. Well, because you have, if that's how you want to narrate it, uh, he might have a little bit of trouble getting back up and trying to slash now that he's dead. I wasn't going to do it on him anyways because I already did it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I, I didn't get blades. one reaction a turn. I figured oh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. my was reaction, reaction for that gotcha. turn. Yeah. As you, you wouldn't be able to... the, the, the body of Holmes just falls right on over, leaving it. Uh, that does for your turn? Yes. Okay. Leaving it down to Gregor. <sighs> Uh, who the fuck are you people? And he goes to try to slash at Connor. Well, that hits. That hits Connor. Finally. Uh, two, six, nine. Connor takes nine slashing damage. As he just... <laughs> slashes right at Connor. Uh, that is, and he is going to try to run, which will give Connor an attack of opportunity. <laughs> that one? Other way. Nice. Nine twenty. Yo, look at you killing your own NPCs. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> your own oh, NPCs. Let me I see the damage. This is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> this is, should it be? Eight plus five. That's uh, 13. How do I want to do this? I, uh... <laughs> this is fucking ridiculous. Uh, mate, we killed your whole family. I'd just give up and follow you. Well, he he was trying to run. He was trying to run away. Oh. Uh, and so, which oh. gave Connor an attack of opportunity. It's and I wrote a natty 20. I'm really proud of you, Connor. <laughs> Way to go. No cowards allowed. I guess no cowards allowed. And he slashes up with the flames kicking. And it's, it makes for a very interesting uh, scene aesthetically as lightning is constantly coursing around the arena and then this big chasm of fire <laughs> flies up as he cooks uh, Gregor as he's uh, you see Gregor still continuously to run as he's caught on fire and then he takes one step, two steps three and then falls over being cooked in the flames of the rapier and Connor, say, ig say as Ignis, cut, turning the flame off, swiping the sword, and then sheathing it. And that will end combat. Woo! Anybody want to burn this village down? That's, I think we should search the village first. Arcanus is right, I think. Well, I'm going to burn this uh, poison hut down. Um, <laughs> it, it would be lovely if you guys could untie me. Oh, oh, and I'll go do that first thing. Oh, you're, you're an angel, sweetheart. Just, just any, any time. You doing okay? I, I've had better, I, 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 I've had better nights. That's I, did, same. I, I didn't expect to be tied up like this. Hmm. Yeah, no, no, nobody does. That's not fun. Well, you know, drinks later, but you know, it's usually not, not first date. 
situations. Could you, could you get, to, can you just get my legs free? <laughs> I'm just going to untire and just like flush very heavily and she just like wants to be able to turn invisible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, how are you going to, are you going to try to just strong arm the chains? It worked last time. Go for it. Uh, that's going to be a 17. 17. You, you, you bend the chains a little bit so she's able to wiggle through with her uh, foot out so her feet are free. And right. she's going to try to dexterity her way out of the, the cuffs, which she does. She's actually not horrible. She's actually not terribly bad at being nimble. And, uh, and she just kind of gets them out. And, uh, 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 this is why no one fucking goes here. <laughs> Uninhabited, my ass. Fucking cannibals. Fucking cannibals. Right? I... They were trying to get us to take baths. I... I think they were trying to boil us alive. Like they're trying to make you, make sure you taste good. Oh my god, that's so. Uh, it's so dark. Oh god. Um. Did you say you guys were searching the houses? Yeah. Okay. Row uh, investigation. Seven sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Oh, sorry, 15. I have a plus zero on that. I forgot. Okay, She's not. 15. Um, Marcanus, what, what did you roll in investigation? Dang seven. Seven? <laughs> seven? All right. And uh, Jago? Investigation? Yeah. Uh, 22. 22. Okay. As you guys kind of rummage, you, you rummage the town um, as there's really nothing impeding you. So, um, honestly, the with those scores, how long are you guys dedicating to searching? No more than like 10 minutes per house, I'd say. Okay. All right. So for most of the spots, you uh, you, you don't see much. You see empty houses. Um, so you're seeing kind of the same kind of setup, uh, a fully uh, a bed, some wood in the in the stove, but the stoves are very cold. Not a lot, there was much of anything going on. Uh, with that, um, you you search through the pockets of uh, your victims. Um, you you all accumulate. Let's see. About five gold in each of their uh, in each of their pouches. So I'll divvy that up however you would like. Um, and well, I'll then take all their weapons. weapons. As far as their weapons are all rusty. They're rusty hatchets and rusty knives. They're uh, okay. Um, that cleaver that hurt me for like hella though. It's it's <laughs> yes, because they really have a lot of strength that's going in through them. Uh -huh. That's just the CR of the of cannibals. They're just they can hit hard. But they're, they're it's also a rusty hatchet. That's what it is. Damn, these people with Kuru really know how to hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty it's pretty beastly. Um, cool. I want to burn this village down as we leave. <laughs> um, saga. It's a nation of cannibals. You, um, as you were, uh, as, because you also, you had a pretty high roll, right? If I remember correctly. As you, uh, you searched through one of the houses, you notice that there is a, there seems to be a, a type of basement in there. And as you go through the basement, you see the leftovers of oh. the family. You see bones and you see... Uh, different, uh, just different types of carnage around, um, seemingly where uh, it looks like this is where Gregor lived. Um, but on the mantelpiece, kind of locked away in this, you know, which is odd, you know, it's a, it's a, a great axe that's just kind of in a nice little well-placed display case along the far wall, again, around a bunch of bodies, and everything is seal is seems like it has a little bit of a lock on it, and it's uh, very lovely. Uh, great axe. Yeah, I'm gonna try to break the lock and grab it. Okay. Uh, how much does Saga care about traps? 
Saga doesn't isn't usually super worried about traps unless she's expecting them, so she's just gonna go for it. Go for it, okay. Roll uh, strength to just kind of rip the lock right off. All right, uh, seventeen. Seventeen, seventeen. You rip it right off. The display case falls right on out, and you see this great axe perfectly displayed. Oh, yeah, I'll I'll take that. Okay. All right. It looks like it. It looks pretty good. It looks like a pretty. It's very well, very well designed. Um, it seems like um, there's some rooms along the along the ed, along the blunt ends of the great axe. Um, it seems like it has a little bit more of a heft lift to it. Um, it does seem like it requires there's some magic within it, so it may, it may require attunement. It seems like it's a plus one great axe. I'm yeah, I'm just gonna tuck it away, um, not knowing that in character, and we'll bring it back for Jago and Connor to take a look at, because I see runes and I go, oh, magic shit. Mm, okay. Okay. All right. As you tuck that away, uh, Jago, um, Larkanus, you guys are setting a fire? Yes. Uh, how are you using to, what are you using to set fire to the village? I'm going to, uh, well, obviously my uh, sheath got, uh, no, I, I sheathed the scimitar, but I'll pull out the crossbow okay. and just burn my other crimson right to turn them into fire air, uh, bolts. Oh, okay. And yeah. And, and I'll just shoot each roof. Alrighty. That's, you don't need to roll for that. That's, it'll be kind of impressive if I had you miss a house. Right. So. <laughs> plus I have a plus 11 with a yeah. crossbow. Yeah. It's not moving. So as you hit the houses, you see your, you see the flames start to kick and they begin to smolder. And you feel pretty confident that given time, um, it should eventually, yeah, you think it's, uh, it's going to go, and just then it starts pouring rain. <laughs> the smolder is still going, but you forget, you're like, oh, yeah, Lomer. <laughs> it's, it's, wow. But it seems like a smolder. Maybe it'll catch. <laughs> Fuck this place. <laughs> Burn down the next town. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come out with my fancy blue axe to that exact line and go. Yeah, no, we can't burn down every town we come to. These ones tried to eat us, so it's okay. That's what I'm saying to those cannibals, and I want to burn the houses down, but it's I'm not gonna burn down like another town. Town. Don't they don't eat people, they eat lomes. I mean, I was just trying to make them feel better. To burn down town. Look, I found a cool axe. Ooh. Oh, sweet. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Wait, can we have a look at this and see? It, it's got runes on it. I don't understand them. Oh, all right. I'll, let me give it a little inspection. Go ahead and inspect. Ooh, that was a good roll. Hmm. Go ahead. Give me a uh, arcana in chat because you're trying to um, ascertain the kind of magic that's put into it. That's even better. Uh, that's, that's a 23. 23, you definitely sense a level of uh, magic illuminating from uh, it. If you're looking for curses, I'm not sure, do you, is your character uh, proficient in, are, are, do you have any type of ability to see if something is cursed specifically? I, I'll sense, uh, I can see any of its connection to evil uh, is sort of specifically what the grim like psychometry does, mm -hmm. but nothing like check but nothing, curse. like Nothing specific or anything like that. Yeah. So, no, just its connection towards evil, which I feel like is just uh, to feed the uh, DM yeah. <laughs> lore. Yeah, you know? it's to feed DM lore as far as if, uh, if something... Evil. If something owned by a cannibal. It, is, it, 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 well, right? it was owned by a cannibal, yes. Last time you saw it, it was owned by a cannibal. Um, as far as if it's connected to any type of evil entity or fiend-like creature, it doesn't seem like you have any, uh, uh, any of those. You don't feel that kind of stream leak like the like you feel with the hemoglobin or anything like that it's definitely magical you don't really understand the um what kind of magic is involved if it's curse or not you just you're not the guy for that um that's something more for a uh, enchanter or someone who's a little bit more adept with the enchantment 
Yeah. Enchantments. Enchantment. Um, um, but as far as that, it seems like a magical, very effective great axe. The runes on here do not seem to lead to anything nefarious. So I think it's just a regular magic axe. Cool. Well, I think we should probably take a little time on it once we get back on the boat. But speaking of, let's get back on the boat. I'm ready. Great. I want to get the heck out of here. And as you guys hastily head back to the baby, the... Caleb's fa fairy. As you guys give out, uh, Caleb immediately takes no time. She is running back. She wants to be as far away of this place as possible. And she sets everything up. And she's like, if you ain't on here when I'm ready, you're, I'm leaving you. And oh, we are right behind you. Don't worry. All righty. And you guys immediately set sail and are heading off into the night. Now, it has been a quite a quite a journey for you all. Um, it is at this point you guys have been up for a while. You guys gonna take a rest as you are on the ferry? I'm gonna take a long rest because uh, I've taken a lot of damage. Yeah. Yeah, same. I'll keep a lookout. Alrighty. Like so first watch goes to uh, Larcanus. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, go ahead and roll that perception. What the flippin' fluke, dude? Uh, three. <laughs> three. As you kind of look out, rain pouring down, you find a little dry spot under the canopy, looking out. It's the rain and the exhaustion kind of hits you, and you just kind of drift off a little bit to sleep. You, you fall, and then you wake back up about an hour and a half later, realizing, shit, um, everyone's still alive, everyone's good. You fell, you fell asleep, but no one noticed, so... Oh, sure, you can fall asleep and not get constricted by a snake or eaten by a crocodile, but if I'm awake and actually keeping watch... <laughs> well, you were under in the swamp, and you fell, like, twice, making all this motion <laughs> and everything. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how it goes. That's exactly how it goes. Uh, okay. Uh, is there anything you would like to do um, during this during your watch? Uh, well, we're just on the boat, right? We're just, just on the boat. Mm. Yeah, I just want to walk the deck, you know, just make sure I'm catching all the angles, looking in all the trees. Okay. Yeah. You're you're yeah. you're just enjoying the night. Um, again, it's you know the swamp is bustling with with uh with life at night, mm -hmm. so you're hearing the crickets and all the different creatures of the night. <clears throat> um, nice and smooth. No fuss, no muss. Who are you waking up? Uh, dang, who has the most health? Um, it, everyone, wherever, yeah, who knows? Everybody's good. What's, uh, what's, what's Connor looking like? Connor looks good. <laughs> Connor looks Connor good. Connor. Get Connor up. Okay, Connor wakes up. Ugh. Steps out. Looks out, and he is going to roll a perception. That's a two, and uh, that's a whole so three. And he's again looking out, seeing fireflies, kind of dancing along. He kind of just also kind of <laughs> nods, falls asleep, wakes back up. He's like, "Shit, okay, I'm good, I'm good." <clears throat> And um, he is going to just uh, fit around with a little bit of his arcana, just con constantly practicing it now that no one's awake, no no one's there to look at him. He is going to do a little in-depth study of his arcana skills and focusing a little bit more into it. And that will do it for his watch. He is going to wake up Jago. Careful with that hammer. Oh, what? Oh, oh. <laughs> Time yes. for my wash, then. Yeah, yeah. And he plops right back down to sleep. And go ahead and give me a perception. 20. 
20. You are razor focused. You're seeing that uh, Caleb is not so much going to any specific direction as she was just trying to get a, he a healthy distance away as she does not know where you guys are going right now. But after the day, she is just kind of coasting around a general area. You seem like she's kind of just chilling at a point that is going in the direction of where she was in the middle of the location, but she is not making any specific sh d d specific spots as you've seen in your map. Um, and goes off without a hitch. No fuss, no muss. Uh, you do see uh, a few anacondas, but they're deeper into the forest. They don't seem like they noticed you. All the different types of predators you've come across. These anacondas don't want none. And you, you take that as this assurance of that being the case. Um, what would you like to do in this time? Um, I have nothing major, major to do really. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep guard. Okay. Maybe I'll talk to I'll, I'll talk to Caleb real quick. Yeah. Okay. As you go up to the to the captain's quarters, uh, which is also where she pilots it around. She looks back. How are you doing? How are you doing? Um, right. Um, how are you doing? I know you've been um, captured and whatnot. Oh. You're okay. Uh, well, would very much like like not to never experience that again. But I'm uh, I'm Dylan. I'm home, so I feel a little bit more comfortable. How did they um How did they get to you? I didn't even see it coming. I was outside of the ferry, just waiting. You know, walking around, and then next thing I know, something just, I just saw darkness. We need to give you some proper protection, that's for sure. Well, if I would have saw them coming, baby, if I saw them coming, they'd be dead. That's what they all say, I know, I understand that, but um, next time we'll keep the wits about you, I promise to protect you more, because oh, you yes. are all about do this, uh, do this journey. By the way, where are we going? We seem to be going in sort of a little circle formation. Well, I was letting y'all get your rest in. We got a good distance away. But, um, where would you like to go? You ready to... I mean, we have two other spots you mentioned, Rumlog and Thornbog. I don't know. Or I can take y'all back. I was thinking of, uh, Thornbog. I don't know about my mates, but that's what my boat is for. Okay. Well, we can head on over. We can start heading on over that way. You're about... A day and a half out. Oh, that, that works for me. Are we closer to that one than the other one? We're about, about in, yeah. look, get, you know, about the, we're kind of in the middle. So Let's go to Thorn, uh, Thornbog, that's where Frollo is from, right? Uh, as, no one knows where Frollo's from. Yeah. Frollo is, the, one of the things that makes him a mysterious gangster is that no one really knows anything about him. I know he runs things out here, you know, far enough away. You know, and ever since, uh, ever since Father's Resolve became a ghost town, no one came by the bayou, ever. So, Frollo came in, and he's been running all the towns and villages for decades. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that gentrification day, so, um, yeah, so let's head to Thornburg. And, uh, when my mates wake up, we'll let them know where we're going. Well, I'm the... Well, I'm your fairy. <laughs> and she starts making a, a noticeable course change as she starts heading towards Thornbog. Bless you. Thank you. Oh, you got to cover that girl up. She's sneezing already. The witness is <laughs> here. And she gives you a blank, uh, extra thick blanket. Thank you. I'll make sure to give it to you post haste. Oh. Allergy season in the bayou. <laughs> <laughs> it's the humidity. It's really... Yep. As, uh, okay, as your uh, watch comes to an end, you, I can imagine, you wake up uh, Saga. <laughs> you wake up with a, do you put the blanket over? Uh, yeah, I'll put the blanket over her and yeah. I'll go, it's time for your watch. <laughs> so, you, <laughs> so you wake up with this nice, thick, warm blanket wrapped over you. And what would you? Sure. All righty, give me that. Uh, <laughs> Get burrito myself as I go on watch. <laughs> okay, as you cover up, uh, you're nice and toasty. 
Uh, go ahead, give me perception. All right, 23. 23. Again, 100% focus. Um, one thing you have noticed, as you guys have, you seem like you guys are making a, a, a certain course, um, unless you look at your map, you don't terribly know where you're going. Um, but it seems like there is a course that's being made. Um, one thing you have noticed, though, as you guys are moving along, it's starting to get, now you've been a, a good distance away from uh, um, tucked away. Um, you come across a few small little uh, uh, hovels, homes, which appeared like the people would live there, but they are abandoned as you are going along the way. And you've seen, and this is not the first time you've seen this kind of thing as you are doing your watch, um, another small little home kind of tucked away along the bayou, again, abandoned. Or another one, doesn't look abandoned, looks like people live here, but all quiet. Maybe they're asleep, maybe maybe they're not there. Um, but fairly, because it seems like you're going across a actual a little bit more active um, uh, uh, riverbank along the bayou. So you definitely seem like you're going towards civilization. Um, but it seems fairly empty. I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna also go chat with Caleb. And as you get up there, you look over. And Caleb turns around. She's like, "Oh, perfect! Co the perfect co-pilot. How you doing, sweetie?" Doing all right. Feeling better now that I've had a bit of sleep. How are you? I've had better days. I've definitely had better days. And I wish. Wish I would have been in that fight with y'all. I could have given them a one four. Much of a fighter? Well, I'm not much of a fighter, but my girl right here, and she points to her backpack where the little makeshift mechanical spider walks around her. This little girl has a few tricks up her sleeve. Oh, well, I hope we'll get, well, I don't want to put you in harm's way, so hopefully we don't have to see it, but I'd really hope to see it. <laughs> oh, I have many things I would love for you to see, but don't worry. I. Whoa. I don't really want to hop into a fight with y'all. You guys seem way more capable and more experienced than I am. But I have a few tinkering toys that I've played around with that gets rid of a, the pirate or two. Always good to have tricks up your sleeve. Uh, what's this area that we're going through? I'm noticing, like, houses and things. Is that yeah. normal for this yeah, there's usually little uh, traders, little merchants along the pathway, and uh, little families that don't really want to, little secluded families, hermits. Seems pretty quiet. They might be just asleep. Um, notice a few of them are abandoned, but, you know, things change out by the bayou. If you can't get enough food, you might have to just move into town. That makes sense. I didn't realize anybody lived up this way. I kind of figured that after... After Father's Resolve emptied out, the, the Bayou did too, for the most part. Oh, no. No, no, no. The, the, that cuss of uh, Father's Resolve never really reached all the way out here, but it cut off the main transport to being mm -hmm. here. And, you know, most of the... In an in a, in a island full of orcs and tieflings, no offense, my dear, us goblins kind of just keep to ourselves and only a few orcs and tieflings live out by here they are good with us we're good with them but no one was really going to come all the way out here to mingle with the with the bayou folk you know i'm sure you're one of the more delightful people from where where are you from mother's love am yeah yeah i figured i figured yeah y'all don't really come out this far out and, you know, but Frollo always made it the time. And so we're here to ourselves, do some work, and keep our heads down. You know, it doesn't sound all that different from Mother's Love in some ways. Sure, we got more around, but uh, nobody was necessarily taking care of us either. And Frollo took advantage of that, too. And Jago might have a new endgame goal. <laughs> <laughs> oh well well here's to making things a little different let's hope that let's hope this is part of that yeah so if I 
still got time left during this because I do want to try to just kind of sit there with my axe if there's still an hour after after that chat. Okay. And you're going to attune to the axe. Let me do do do. Let me add that axe to your inventory. Let me, I added A and X, but maybe this is a different one, so it's I will get rid of it. One. It is a different one. Oh. Oh. Don't like the sound of that. Do, do, do. I should just take the rapier out of my inventory because that's Connor's now. <laughs> You are attuned. You can go ahead and uh, refresh your page and check that out. Yeah. I'm gonna go get a real bad nothing in between. <laughs> it's an axe that shoots chickens. <laughs> <laughs> As um, you concentrate and attune to the great axe, you can go ahead and read the details of it. And oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do I feel anything as I attune to it, or is yeah. it just yeah? Okay. You, you you feel it. A little difficult to explain, but you feel something. Something. Oh no! I drop the axe to my back next to the other one. Sort of taking care to make sure that this one is the closer one to me. It's easier to reach. Sounds like it's powerful. You know, it sounds like it like it, it curses her to um, eat human flesh or something. But it is within reach. Yep. Okay. Alrighty. And as your watch comes to the end, Jago. As you sleep, you arise in the council room of your uh, elders where you see a completed hemoglobin kind of levitating up in the air on top of this cauldron of fire with another chunk piece is kind of constantly levitating around it and this blood magic that's just kind of constantly illuminating from it um, in front of the brazier of flames is this large bugbear equal to your size with a gray coat on and he kind of looks over at you. I'll be fucking surprised that you're still alive. Oh, I'm not. To be honest, I'm kind of cool. Mm. Keep down this path, you're going to end up dead. And which path is that? Working for our corte. I mean... Technically, I haven't done anything he's asked yet. Well, considering he has three paws, he has most of the paws of the hemoglobin, seems like you're doing just about everything he wants. He leans over. I can't hold him anymore. He's too strong. These fucking guys that you're rolling with, they're good people. They're not like guys like us. That tiefling girl, that monk guy, that rich asshole. They're gonna die. I can't stop it. I can't hold them anymore. I gave everything. I gave everything to hold him down. I gave everything to keep him caged. I was only delaying. If you got some fucking plan, I don't know what it is, but it better be a goddamn good one. Do this old guy a favor, though. Help to Sona. Save my friend. You have my word. I will help to Sona. All right. I'll try to keep that curse from killing you a little bit longer. And he... Thank you. I'll appreciate it. 
as he fades away, the courtroom, the elders' room with the hemoglobin fades out, and you wake up. On the bayou, on the ferry, moving along, noticeably not damaged in any conceivable way, um, no hit from the curse. And uh, you wake up, you guys are up and about, you got about another day of travel, but uh, what would you like to do as you uh, arise for the morning? Uh, I want to uh, take a look at Saga and see that she has the axe on her back. I was like, um, see you two, my friends. Yeah, you know, I like this axe. I feel it feels really good. Good to hear, good to hear. Lacanus, how did you sleep? Slept great. Mm, the waves of the bayou make me, you know, give me good, good dreams. <laughs> the calm stillness in this water. Yeah, yeah, you know, except for like the snakes and the, you know, various animal sounds. Yeah, yeah, peaceful. Good peace. How about you? You sleep okay? Um, um, I, 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 I slept okay. Um, oh, I had a vision from my, uh, uh, from Zulu asking us to aid to sell. And I agree, I gave him my word, I would. He's been holding our corte back from taking over me. Essentially, offhandedly saving our lives in the process. So we kind of owe him that one. Well, I mean, I I don't want to kill my however many great grandfather. So. Alrighty. Go ahead, someone, roll a d6 for me. Last time I did this, I summoned the bunny. So somebody else do five. this. You a five. That seems safe. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Last time it was a D8, and I rolled a 7 for the bunny. So it feels <laughs> like one less than maximum is the worst way to go. Mm -hmm. You guys, after a 5, no issues. You guys roll by. No encounters. No, you are you are sitting pretty. Nice, smooth uh, uh, ferry ride over to Thornbog. Um, as you guys are reaching towards the later parts of the evening, um, go ahead and roll me a perception check. Ten. Nineteen. Nineteen. Was it thirteen? Okay. So, a um, few things you guys notice. As you guys are approaching, um, uh, as you guys are going down this main bank of, uh, of the bayou, um, you look down and you notice a lot of, sometimes you see little spots of the water that get very foamy like there's a lot of commotion going on directly under there um, and Caleb kind of peers out like God be careful there's piranhas on this side oh oh piranhas and as you guys go along you see off to the far end like as if you on a smaller little uh a small little riverbank, something about the size of a canoe, going down, you see two figures hanging from a tree. Seems like it's very far. You can't really make out the actual figure. You see one, you see one large figure, you see a small figure. Both seem like they're being, they're hanging from a, a thick tree that's that's looped over the uh, the river. Um, oh, I don't like that. Yeah, on ropes like, they or they're, they're in like, a their 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 arms not over their neck but like seems like their arms are t are bound they're just swinging in the tree they're just swinging in the distance too far to tell you guys see that yeah that's not normal should i try to shoot them down maybe let's get a little closer i'll i'll, I'll arm the crossbow Get my darts ready let me get this straight. You guys see two bodies hanging off to the side, and you want to go and investigate? You can't just leave them up there. Jeep. <laughs> Stops the ferry. It's too big. My, fa my baby's too big to go down that way. You have to take the canoe. Uh, Jago, you think you can aim from here? I can try. 
You like, again, you see the bodies. They're hanging up right off of the tree, and under them is the is the river. I have like a hundred foot range. River with the bananas into the river. <laughs> Can one of us row the boat underneath them and catch them and bring them back? I am good at water stuff. I can do this. All right. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, the me volunteering to do all the river shit is going to kill Saga. <laughs> that remains to be seen. We'll see. <laughs> As... Um, Okay, so you you get on the, the canoe. Just give me a give me a dexterity plus proficiency as you are a proficient sailor. All right. Um. Fourteen. Fourteen. Easy enough. You start rowing as you get closer, and you start getting closer to the two figures you're kind of shocked at who you see hanging from the tree as you see a familiar elf and a familiar goliath barrett and kith hanging bone see, you can see the ribs of barrett as they seems like they have been hanging there for quite a number of days live days it's hard to tell you you're looking up and you're seeing them. You can give me a perception check, but it's kind of hard to tell to see if you can see a chest moving while they're swaying in the in the rain and wind. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Maybe. Okay. Um, I'm gonna just kind of put up a hand to see if I can get Jago to stop, sort of just like a like a, a this sort of motion, like a hey, don't. I'm not yelling because I'm a little worried about what might be going on around here. Okay. Um, I'm going to row over to shore. All right, easy enough. Um, shore is about, it's about, uh, about seven feet, seven feet by both sides. So you can easily <clears throat> row it back over so you're on the shoreline. You even see the rope that's kind of bound to the trunk of the tree and it's tied up. So that's what's holding him up. That's dangling him over the 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 little the creek the swamp creek that you're on okay yeah so if i can see the rope what i'm gonna do instead of shooting them down and risking hurting them is i'm gonna untie it and just very gently lower them trying to land them in the boat okay give me a strength check 21 21 um very good very good as you let the as you untie the knot and the rope immediately immediately goes you grab it and you have great leverage hold on to tribe and unfortunately baron and kit weigh a lot less now than you would assume a goliath would weigh and you're able to slowly push down and their bodies just kind of limply fall into the canoe great they get back into the canoe they still freaks me out so i'm gonna row out a ways and mm -hmm. then try to look at them actually no screw that i'm just rowing back to the boat yeah okay. bring them back to the boat all right go ahead and do me another uh dexterity of just rowing back with proficiency uh, that is what was it again 20. 20. easy enough as pie you actually get there a lot faster this time and you got and now uh, Jago, Connor, and Larkanus, you see the starved bodies of uh, Kith and Barrett. Now that I'm at the boat, I'm going to try to see if they're alive. Okay. Go ahead and give me a medicine check. I've All got right. no clue. Anyone else checking? Oh, yeah, I'll check. I'll check them. Oh, yeah, that's a 23. 23, okay. Is the medicine check? Yeah. I've never done a medicine check in this game. All right, uh, 20. 20. All right. Uh, you see that they are alive, but they are completely exhausted. They are starved. They are delirious. They are... Let's uh, give them some of my rations. Okay. 
Um, you, you try to drink, give them some water. It's it takes a lot. Um, they they'll drink as much water as you give them. They're not really responding enough to eat. They are literally in a in a haze. The alchemy can the alchemy jug make water? Uh, it's already making honey. If I pour out the honey, will it make water? Well, more the, water? it's been a day, so it's. Oh, okay. So go ahead and <laughs> pop it open again. Let's All see right. if the uh, the honey will help them out if they have a low blood sugar. <laughs> Just smear honey on their faces. All right. Uh, they can eat it like Winnie the Pooh. So you need to roll. Uh, <laughs> what is it? Roll a D10. D10. Nine. Nine. <laughs> you create twelve gallons of salt water. <laughs> salt water. <laughs> That's a real fruit and onion situation. <laughs> um, but as you, as Caleb comes down and sees them, she's like, "Give me the jug. Give me the jug, baby." Right, I, I give it to. And she reaches in to one of her uh, pockets and pulls whoa, 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 out. Whoa, she has a gun. <laughs> I'm working. Shh, who told you? <laughs> uh, thing on you. And she pulls out another type of contraption. It's this uh, almost. It's, it, it looks like a hexagon um, that she just kind of starts moving in, and she just dumps it into the the alchemy jug. And it starts boiling it as she casts purified food and drink. Hell yeah. And you see, you smell like salty vapors leave the, uh, the jug. And she takes the jug like, I'll, I'll take care of them. I'll see if I can get them back up and running. And just help me bring them to my quarters. Help me. Do you want me to? Do you want me to uh, navigate the boat while you take care of them? I, I can do that. Woman after my own heart. You go right ahead, girl. Just keep going down this road. There's only one way to go. Okay. All righty. Do that. Okay. As you uh, take the helm, see the levers and the, the gears. She's like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. I can do this. Yeah. Give me, uh, give me proficiency. What you oh, do? That one. You immediately careen the ferry, and it just hits a tree, full on, and and then you bounce it back, and <laughs> you see Kayla. You're not that oh, pretty. You're not, not that sandwich. pretty. Don't fuck my baby over. <laughs> this is not a sailboat. At all. I go. Maybe we should dock and see if these people are okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was. That's definitely what I was trying to do. Yeah. Dags, I got you the suggestion. I understood loud and clear. <laughs> Just pull the lever on the right. Pull the lever. Okay. Right. And as that. you do, you hear the the propellers just stop, and it comes to a stop. It comes to a complete stop. Also, the rain cuts out and, oh, and you seem like <sighs> and you uh, look them over they s again they seem pretty out of it um, and Caleb is gonna do a once over as well um, she attempts to do uh, puts her beads on them try to do a cure wounds which they do heal Ooh, that one not that much. Ooh. Ooh, that one not that much either. But they heal up a little bit. They seem like they're breathing. Uh, seems like they are alive, a little bit more alive than anything. But they are um, three points of exhaustion. They are unmovable. Just, just break the, They're going to be out for a while. And she's like, well, only a couple minutes away from Thornbog. So whatever happened to your friends happened there. Do you think we can leave them with you while we go explore Thornburg? I'll take care of them. 
Jago, do we maybe want to know what happened to them first? They, they don't even look like they're up for speaking, that's for sure. If you guys are trying to inspect the bodies, you can give me an investigation. Try and see if you yeah, can gleam anything from, uh, or medicine. You can do investigation or medicine. Fifteen for medicine. Fifteen for medicine? Okay. Twelve for, we'll call it investigation. Okay. Eleven. Investigation or medicine? Um, actually, I'll do medicine at 12 because okay. I have that. So, um, you guys will see, like, it seems like the main thing that's causing them ailment is starvation. Um, and it seems like a an exhaustion. It seems like something that's been keeping them up. Um, and as far as Saga, your investigation check, you noticed on Caleb there's some serious bruises along her face and her stomach, um, as well as with Barrett. It seems like they have been beaten very severely. Um, and that's all you ascertain. Oh, I can take a beating. We don't want to end up tied up on a tree. But I will take whoever tied them up on the tree and put them there in their place. I'll be right there helping you, my friend. All right. So are we heading to Dornbog? Yes. Come on, Vaminos. Okay. Everybody, let's go. I'll... Uh now, honey, do you think you cannot ram my baby into a tree again? I'm going to try really hard. Can you give me a quick rundown of what the lepers do first? Okay. This, <laughs> this one <laughs> speeds it up. This one slows it down. This one, And she goes through the, she gives you a very quick, uh, you know, one, two. It seems Great. simple. It's not using, it, it, doesn't use, it doesn't seem like wind is a requirement in any kind of way. There's no cell. It seems like it's just a, some type of propeller, you know? Okay. 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 Yeah, I think you can do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take it easy. Roll a, I roll a five plus my proficiency of four. Get nine. nine. You again, scrape along, just going a little too much into uh, shallow water, but then you still, but again, eventually you, Right your path, like an, and you see like Caleb. Like a galaxy quest with the whole ship just screeches across the tunnel. Like, like, you're, <laughs> like you did a fender bender, and to get out of the fender bender, you screeched, you just scraped the car a little bit, and you just, you see Caleb go, mm. I'm sorry, I really like deep water better. Mm. Uh, you lose so many points. Uh, <laughs> and she just kind of focuses on Barrett, like kind of putting a little damp cloth on his head and um, bandaging up Kith and just kind of trying to tend to him, trying to ignore what you're doing. And as you guys approach, there are about 30 minutes pass, and you see the beginning parts of the village of Thornbog, and you see a goblin who is kind of walking along the dock side and he looks up and he has like a frightening look and he starts waving like and he like kind of he hops on a little rat a little uh, canoe and he starts coming out to you guys and as he gets close he's like Caleb Caleb get the fuck out of here and he kind of clampers on and he sees Caleb. He's like, "What the fuck? Now is not the time for a visit. You need to get the fuck out." Like, and he looks over, like, "Holy shit! Someone cut him down! Oh my god! Oh, we're fucked! We are so fucked! Oh my god!" I'm gonna try to back us away. What did we do? <laughs> hey, what uh, happened? Like, oh, okay. No. Um. Now, and Caleb's like, we kind of can't, you can stop, but we're, you kind of have to go, keep going. I don't think boat's going reverse, mate. No. I'm going to stop. Yeah, okay. Good. As you guys stop, you see this goblin, he's just kind of pacing back and forth. Cool. He has this big bag of, of what looks like with um, a type of flower that's kind of falling out of it. It's like stacked of thick 
kind of red uh, leaves uh, packed in his uh, satchel. And he's just kind of frantically looking around. He's looking back in town. And like, who the fuck are these guys, are these people, Caleb? Who the fuck are these people? Because now is not a good time to be bringing visitors. Who are you? Who are you guys? Why is it not a good time for visitors, like? The champions of the mayor. We welcome you. You know, everybody. and my thing is, I was raised in a plot household today. You should always be prepared for guests. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so out. sorry. Welcome <laughs> to. I'm so sorry. Welcome to Thorbot. Can you get the fuck out now? Sorry. Ignore my friends. My name is Saga. I'm from Mother's Love. We're. Can't really tell you what we're here for, but it's important and it's probably related to whatever's going on. We're good fighters. We're trusted by people in charge here, not here, here, but generally here. Um, <laughs> if you can just tell us what's going on, we can help. Okay. Kayla, Kayla looks over at the goblin. It's like, Remy, Remy, calm down, all right? Dimitri hired me to ferry them, so they're, they're fighters. Yeah? So were they. And he points to the two people. These two show up a couple of days ago. Just a couple of days ago. Next thing you know, fucking six people are dead. I come outside, six people are fucking oh, dead. And then, then Frollo shows up out of fucking nowhere. He doesn't come around here. He doesn't. He I don't know. He can kind of come and go as he pleases. But there's fucking things here now. Like he has half the town picking up these random shit everywhere. Like I got, I got to turn this shit in. And he holds up his bag full of these type of deep red leaves. And he like everyone's like, and there's a curfew. If I'm not back in the next hour to deliver this, I'm fucked. All right. And then those Sorry. fucking things come out at night, and I ain't fucking. I need to be home. Do I recognize the, the leaves? Uh, go ahead and give me a. Uh, uh, what's uh, wh your proficiency? Give me a nature uh, check with proficiency, because this is a, a herb. Nature. Unless you're proficient with nature. Give nature. me a naughty by nature check. <laughs> yeah, I'm not proficient with nature at all. Okay. Um, I, I but you have you are a herbalist, correct? Yeah. So well, I'll let you use your your proficiency for that. Okay, so I just wrote a 16. 16? Yeah. Um, you recognize the leaves as um, is colloquially in La Mer as a red grasp. It's a type of uh, leaf that grows down by the bayou. Um, it's also a type of paralytic. Mm. Why is he having them collect leaves that produce a paralytic? Hmm. I'm curing that. I'm gonna. Hey, Jago, is that one of the ingredients in the thing? Uh, let me uh, do a history check. Go ahead. <laughs> That's a 15. And it is. It is a uh, part of the Ascension concoction. I think he's using these people here to uh, get all the ingredients for the ascension spell or po po potion poem. <laughs> Doug, are you are you sure that curse is uh, is holding off? Are we are we sure about that? No. We're heading to the open mic. Yeah, I'm never sure about a curse. That's for sure. <laughs> look, look, guys, look, I gotta show up at the temple in an hour to give them what I got. All right, I, I can't not be there. Not if we just get to the temple first. I mean, I, don't don't let anyone see you. Jago, I don't think this is a, I don't think this is a run in ax wielded sort of situation. I think this is a sneak in, blend in, infiltrate sort of situation. Well then, you should disguise yourself with that hat. I'm gonna put the hat on. Can I? What can we do with that? Can we, can, basically, it's alter self. It's the spell alter self. 
<laughs> Can we get them to describe what Frollo looks like? And she could just be Frollo? Ooh. That's up to you. you did say that that seems know. like a bad idea because if Frollo's here, <laughs> that could get complicated. I think our best bet is. Um, it would get if complicated I look like if. A we... <laughs> yes. The, yeah, majority of the people in town are goblins. Great. Then I think I'm gonna I'm gonna put on the hat and I'm gonna turn into a goblin. And I actually have goblin. Up, so I'm gonna show you guys what kind of goblin. I'm. Oh, good. Yeah. Show us what kind of goblin you got. <laughs> Give me a second to grab it. Like, definitely keep going while we're talking about this. But I do want to me what as, you got. <laughs> as uh, you see, um, Saga place her hat on and asphyxiate it. Her fist just <laughs> turns into um, not that much smaller. Uh, she's not terribly taller than a goblin, but uh, <laughs> it too, uh, a goblin girl, um, which we will see what she looks like eventually. Um, and Goblin Saga in the... Is in the chat. Goblin. Oh, lovely. He's so cute. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, Little uh, wet hair that goes well with the humidity, with the with the rings around, freckle, dark block big blocks freckles along her face, big red eyes, sharp teeth. And and you see Kayla look over at you, she's like now you've gained some points back. Alright. <laughs> she lost points. For points to begin with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You break my fuck. Oh, and, oh, and, she, and she goes back to oh, just. Please worry about that. I'll learn. Uh, yeah, well, welcome to this party where the points are made up. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you, just, you know, you see uh, Remy hop back onto his rowboat. Like, well, if y'all coming, you know, take your rowboat and just follow me. And he kicks off. And he starts rowing. And uh, Connor is like, well, um, so what's the plan? Uh, we wait a night? If there's a curfew, it feels like maybe it's too late to try to get back into town now because they'll be expecting us to bring things and we don't have things to bring. Well, Caleb's like, you can sneak around town. It's a pretty big town. Uh, it, I don't know what Caleb, you're talking do you, about. are you familiar with this town? Do you know where the temple is? Yeah, I do. I do. It's just further north. Just go along. It gets closer to on the other side uh, of town. But you can make it. It's not a, it's, it's, it's a decent-sized town. It's about half the size of Mother's Love. Okay, so, okay. Stepmother's Love. <laughs> she just rolls her eyes. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have given Jago the hat. He stands out a lot more than I do. This was a bad idea. Oh, oh no. I'm just like I'm just like a giant goblin now, and I can speak goblin. So, well, alter just... self, if I remember correctly, me does it not change your size? I no, think disguise I... self doesn't. Alter self can. Transform your appearance. You decide what you look like, including your height, weight, facial features, sound of your voice, hair length, coloration, and distinguishing characteristics, if any. You can make yourself appear as a member of another race, though none of your statistics change. You also can't appear as a creature of a different size than you, and your basic shape stays the same. If you're bipedal, you can't use this spell to become quadrupedal, for instance. And Because uh, I gave you the, what was the thing called? Out of Disguise. So and also, I'm realizing only works for an hour, so like we gotta go. <laughs> cool. All righty. I'll say you take the lead. I'll hold in the shadows since I'm uh, much more sneaky. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm hiding too. Yeah, uh, I guess I'm fairly, a uh, I'm fairly stealthy, and um, yeah. Is this one of those uh, towns where we could just hop rooftop to rooftop while she's uh, on the ground? As you guys approach the. It's all wood, wood and um, 
type of uh, leaves that kind of put over it. These aren't incredibly sound structures. There's a lot of them. So as far as if just giving it a general perception, just your passive perception will make you like, you're not sure if, it will, if every single roof would hold your body weight. But you can yeah. give it a go. I'm going to stick to the ground then. Okay. All righty. And he's, as you guys approach, um, <coughs> Caleb, um, Remy gets up on the on the deck. Now that he's over at Thornbog, he kind of cinches over his satchel. He looks over, sees you guys kind of dip off to the side, and he kind of generally waits for Saga to get up here. And as he's like, okay, head down. Don't fucking talk to nobody. And, um, yeah, and he kind of just takes another satchel and kind of kind of puts half of it over and he just like, hands you a satchel full red. He's like, okay, let's, let's fucking see the boss. Yeah. Let's go. Thank you. And as you guys walk up the way, and as you're walking, the sun's starting to dip. Give me uh, some stealth checks, guys. Oh, that's pretty good for Connor. Yes. 17 for Connor. 30 20. 30 20. Jago? Nah. Girl one? Nah. Okay. As you guys are approaching uh, along the side, um, moving like the wind, um, uh, Jago, you kind of just step on the wrong plank and it makes a big kind of cave in. Uh, Startling another goblin who's kind of looking over. And he catches eyes with you. It seems like a, a, a female goblin who's also kind of coming with an, another batch of a nurse satchel full of uh, some type of uh, leaf. Um, this one with a deep purple. And she kind of like... <gasps> Give me a persuasion check. Natural 20. Natural 20. She's Ooh, from one end to the other. She just kind of walks over to you. And she mouths the words, be careful. And starts walking up into an ar- up to the other direction of where you see that also Saga and um, and Rami are going. Alrighty. Um, as you guys get to the other end of town, um, the night starts to dip. And the second the sun starts dipping away, and you see Rami, he leans over to hey, look, just don't freak out, but I fucking hate it when this happens. And as the night goes, billowing up from under the wood planks that that, that have kept the city above the swamp, approaching, kind of translucent, coming up from under it. (gasps) You see a wraith, kind of, and just patrolling. Walking past, doesn't pay Rami any mind, doesn't pay you any mind. And you just see Rami's like, I fucking hate those things. I fucking hate those things. Yeah, me too, Remy. Me too. You are not there. You are off to the side stealthily. But oh you do see a wraith. You do see the wraiths. You see one wraith pass by. You only see the one passing oh, by. I hate, oh, I hate those things. Those fucking things. Dog doesn't like them either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give me one more stealth check, guys. As you are now, now Saga, you are seeing the temple. You see this temple with uh, in, with a statue in front of it of a of a woman completely bandaged up, um, which you 21. now recognize as the visage of 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 uh, Talona, the the goddess of poison. Um, as this is an ancient temple of hers. Um, Connor is going to roll stealth. Oh, again, uh, 16. What did you roll, Arcanus? An 8. I rolled a, um, a 21. 21? Okay. Um, you, uh, Connor, are being very stealthy, but you make, again, Lar- uh, Larcanus, you make some noise, and you just hear a... <gasps> and he starts to come towards you. You have a second or two. You got. Give me one more stealth check to try to get out the way. Please, 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 please. Oh, my God. Why do you hate me? I literally just rolled another eight. Are you kidding me? Okay. Okay. 
You, you, you're still a distance away from the Wraith. But the Wraith is now in your area, and it is actively searching for the noise. Mm. But at this point, you feel like if you move, he's going to see you. So I don't know what the mailman did to these dogs, but fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so as you are, um, you're kind of just, you're stuck. All right. The guy will be. All right. Saga, you and Remy walk through these doors, <coughs> these large open stone doors of the temple. And you walk in, you see more goblins kind of going back and forth. And you, let me, as you walk in, you see a figure back to you at the far, and once you reach to the end of the uh, temple, you see this massive opened area. And you see a figure back to you, kind of hunched over. And next to that figure, these are humanoid uh, creatures, not really able to tell the person who's back to you, but the person next to him. Very tall, proud tiefling. I will drop their image in the chat. Please don't let this be a family member. <laughs> <laughs> Minus I'm the don't 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 mind the little goblin behind the photo. And okay. you, and as you see this tiefling man kind of look over with a big smile on his face as you guys approach. As he smiles, you see a go tooth right prominent in front of him. And you see barrels and barrels and barrels of, um, this time, a type of liquid that's kind of constantly perpetuating. You, you see little, uh, arcan like little dishes of, uh, it boils over even though there's no heat. And you feel like this deep, kind of arcana energy pulsating from them and you see Remy dump and he just kind of looks over you like, and he dumps the package on over and you see yeah, this I will... yeah okay yeah I'll just do the same I was seeing if I had anything that I could like add okay. to the potion but I do not <laughs> okay as you dump the ingredients into these barrels as you dump it in it takes on this it, it takes on more of a red uh, uh, look and a little bit more of a disturbing sweet honey smell so as you add this last bit of the ingredient the the vial and the goes away as if hidden uh, you see the tiefling man kind of peer over him it looks good Oh, yeah, it looks nice and good. Good work, Remy. Let see, don't worry. I take care of my friends. Now, we're going to get these things all taken care of. And as he snaps his fingers, you see on the far end, Orc get up, walk over, eyes down, kind of with a, with a sullen look on the face. Now, my friend... Why don't you do what you came here to do? And he starts drawing these sigils and chalk along the floor around, and you see a few, and he points to some of the, you, 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 grab those. And they start grabbing the concoction. And as he's painting the sigil down the ground, he slams his hand, and you see a, tele a portal kind of open up. Well, now, it's been a pleasure. Now, you boys, go ahead and take my stuff on over. Yes, Frollo. Yeah, yeah, yes, Frollo. Yes. Nice and good. Well, sir, look, peers over to the person in the corner, just kind of standing there looking out. It was an absolute pleasure. If you need me for anything, I am always here. May Talona bless your way. Come along now. Come along now. Oh, you look different. I don't think I know who you are. And he kind of peers down looking over at you, Saga. I don't remember you. You from Thornbog. Yes, sir. My name's um, Sailith. Sailith. 
Ah, uh, yeah, 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 boss. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's my second cousin, twice removed. She's uh, she's uh, just help. She helped me out. Get your, get, got your red, red, your red leaf thing. She's, she does good work. Mm, got, got done half the time. So, I'm gonna need you both to make a uh, deception. Um, let me see what the modifier is. 10. I apologize in advance. No. Because I rolled a natty one. Oh, no! And Frollo leans over to Remy. Now, Remy, I hope you understand that I am a kind man. I always treat my friends accordingly. I don't care much to liars, and I have a way of dealing with them, and the figure in the right just holds his hand up. But apparently, that's not gonna happen today. Get my shipment out. And Remy grabs the barrel, looks over, uh, yeah, uh, come along. And he trying to gesture to you, and the hand of the figure just holds up. Well, apparently, uh, your cousin, twice removed, uh, needs to stay. Well, now, and good luck, young lady. And you see Remy go through the portal as is the other goblins as they're carrying these barrels going through the portal going through the portal going through the portal and <sighs> gone Frollo stands up adjusts his tie well now I'll be seeing you around young lady or well, maybe not apparently someone wants to have a discussion with you and as he snaps his fingers a dimension door <sighs> opens up for Frollo and he walks through. In the meantime, um, Jago, you are, uh, and Connor, you are approaching the doors of the temple and you have heard, you hear those last sentences from Frollo. Um, are you sneaking into the temple? Yes. Okay, so will Connor. Give me one more stealth check. 27. 27. All right. Connor rolled a 12. And you guys believe you are hidden. And you sneakily approach the temple going through the corridor, going through the hallway, and you see a figure about average size humanoid uh, backs to you. He's wearing a big, thick coat, kind of covering the, like, with a big furry trim wrapping around. Hard to get a, a beat on him, but he is essentially alone now um and all the you don't see remy you don't see any of the other goblins you saw walk in here as you were approaching um you just see the goblin version of uh saga um larcanus you see the wraith that's just kind of constantly pursuing you um and there's a moment where the wraith turns his back is to you this is your moment go ahead and roll one more stealth Trust in this guy one more time. I touch each other. In the heart of the card. <laughs> 13? 13. Don't worry. That's enough. <laughs> As you get up and you just you, you dip right out, you catch up to Connor and you and you Connor, Jago, you um both both you know. I'm like, like Connor's really here. But Connor and Jago both you see that uh Larcanus is at the end of the hall, like just now entering, you guys are a little bit further ahead, and you are now in the corridor, and the figure I must say, I am truly impressed that you have come such a long way to stop my machinations. And the figure turns around and you see an orc half orc with his neck stitched together bound dead eyes as you see the face of sal but with the voice 
of our corte. Now, what is your plan? To get away from me. And we'll pick it up there next week. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Wow. Damn, we should... Can't run. We didn't snuck into some. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well, and yeah. So next week, the heroes of Father's Resolve will deal with the resurrected, possessed corpse of the half orc Sal, who seems to be possessed by the visage of Alacorte. And we will see you guys there next week. And thank you guys so much for <laughs> coming back on and watching these games, watching my homebrew and seeing the party succeed and fail time and time again. And um, if you guys want to know uh, some of our sponsors, startplaying.games is where I uh, DM out, out of. If you guys want to find a DM or you want to just be up with you and your party wants to hop on a game or you just a single player who hasn't played D&D in forever, well, any tabletop, go on startplaying.games and just hop on a game. Sometimes there's a cost. Sometimes they're free. And you can find your best games right there. Uh, if you like the map that I showed of the uh, town uh, where the cannibals were, those maps are by Afternoon Maps. You can find them on Patreon. So definitely check them out. And my, I am your host. I am your DM, Eric Bell. You can find me, Bell Comedy. That's my handle for all my social media. I am most active on TikTok and Instagram. So come over, check my stuff out. I have a podcast called Tell Me Your Story, all in the links in my bios of all my social media. And we're going to move it right on over to Ellen. Hey, y'all. I'm Ellen um, at Chaotic Good Ellen on TikTok and Instagram. You can find me there probably digesting what just happened this week. So come on over and watch me freak out a little more. Awesome. And then bringing it over to Sean. Hey, guys. I'm Sean. I go by Kenobi. Uh, my Instagram is Kenobi. I have music that I will be posting soon. I also stream on Twitch, uh, video games, anything between video games and movies, uh, and just chatting sometimes. Uh, yeah, come check me out sometimes. <laughs> and bring it on over to Rich. Hey, uh, so I have a podcast called Development Hell. Uh, we talk about movies and entertainment. You can always find that there. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Rich and Easy. Uh, and then lately I've been um, uh, just, if you go to the Development Hell Discord, uh, I'll live watch the movies that we do on the podcast on there so you can watch them with me there. All righty. And to the, uh, the human battle master who is not here, who usually helps me with the stream, who is getting his vaccination shot right now, Teddy Rose. Um, he is also a great streamer. You guys, he is incredibly entertaining. You can absolutely find him on Twitch. It's lucky underscore bear. That's also his social media for pretty much everything. So absolutely, you should follow him, subscribe to his stuff. His, his stuff is incredible. And on that note, thank you guys so much, and we will see you next week, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye. Bye. Sayonara. Thank you.